happens in you when you talk about the end times. Something happens when you talk about the rapture and the tribulation. There is a certain level of urgency. And tonight we're going to be talking about end time events. And I hope and I'm praying that these messages produce a sense of urgency on the inside of you. People said, Isaiah, I was up at night. I couldn't sleep because the message that you preach, that is my goal. My goal is that these messages, these Bible messages would produce such an urgency in you that they would change the way you think. They would change the way you live. And ultimately after hearing the word tonight, you wouldn't live your life the same. You wouldn't live in the shallow end of casual Christianity, but you'll say, Lord, I want to go to the next level with you. I want to know you. I don't want to live my life idle. I want to say yes to your calling. This has to produce an urgency so that when the Lord returns, that we are not found sleeping, that we are not like the foolish virgins, that although they were virgins, although they, they were set apart and set aside like many of you to God, when the master returned, they were unprepared and they were found sleeping. And I don't know about you, come on, help me in the chat, but I don't want to be found sleeping when the master returns. I want to be wide awake. I want to be sober in the spirit. We need to break out of the spiritual drunkenness that has come upon the church that says Jesus is not coming back. And this is what the mockers say and the scoffers say. But I came to preach to somebody that there is a man coming back for his church, coming back for his bride that is going to rescue us from the days of head. So is the terror that we're preaching about, is it real? Absolutely. People are telling me they're terrified and I'm I'm also terrified. Guys, when I preach on the tribulation I am terrified in the best way possible because remember Paul said knowing the terror of the Lord I persuade men so Paul was saying if you want to know my motivation for preaching if you want to know my motivation for sharing everything I'm sharing with you guys for going from land to sea getting stoned getting shipwrecked getting beat he said the terror of the Lord in other words I know how serious God is how powerful God is that this is not a game that this is not a joke that's why Jesus said fear the father who could destroy both body and soul in hell. So we need a healthy fear of the Lord for whatever reason in the average church, we don't preach the fear of the Lord. We don't preach messages that induce the fear of the Lord. And so we need the fear of the Lord that produces right living, that leads me to living for Christ. As I'm talking about the antichrist, it's all because I wanna be led more into Christ because I want Christ to be my rest. I want Christ to be my Sabbath. I want Christ to be my refuge. So everything we're teaching with deliverance, with end times, with tribulation, with what I'm gonna to share tonight about the antichrist and about the Armageddon and the, and the final battle, it's all to bring you into closer relationship. It's healthy for you to understand that your time is limited, that you don't have a thousand days, you don't have a thousand years, you don't have tomorrow. Only a fool is promised tomorrow, but now is the day of salvation. It's healthy for you to understand that Jesus can come back at any second. It's healthy to have a biblical worldview or a biblical view of end time events. So you have to understand at any moment, and I want, I want you to keep this every day for the rest of your life in the forefront of your mind, any second, the Lord can come back for his church. Now, I'm not talking about the seven year tribulation and the coming of the Lord. I'm talking about when the Lord comes in the twinkling of an eye and raptures his bride. Now, you might be pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. If you don't know, I'm pre-trib, okay? I shared five or six very compelling reasons why I'm pre-trib and I'll share maybe one or two more tonight, but it doesn't matter. It's not a salvation issue. If you're mid-trip, post-trip, we could still be friends, but I want you to know that it's a real thing, a real reality, and we're going to see, and we are seeing things transpire right now. Here's what you need to realize. There's things happening right now on the earth that have never happened in human history. So don't sit here and tell me, oh, well, they've been saying this is going to come. They've been saying we're in the day of the Lord. If there's ever been a time to be spiritually sober, if there's ever been a time to be spiritually vigilant, it's now. If there's ever been a time to be awake, it's now. You say, Isaiah, well, how do I know if I'm spiritually drunk? When you're spiritually drunk, you don't know the time that you live in. Just like when you're in the, drunk in the natural and you say, I don't even know what time it is. How long have I been here? Where am I? And you black out there's so many of you that are blacked out in the spirit you don't know what time it is you have no spiritual vision you have no spiritual direction for your life and i believe the lord is going to sober you up in jesus name and the same way in the world how did you get sober what did they tell you now listen i i haven't drank in 10 years i used to drink almost every day before i got saved and all all i knew how to do to sober up was eat the bread eat the bread everyone just drink some milk eat the bread well how many people know that the word of god is milk and and bread the bread of life sobers you up spiritually 
And God is wanting to sober you up so that your head would not be in the sand, so that you would not be ignorant. Now, you might just want to click off this video and say, oh, this is not relevant, doesn't apply to me, and you want to keep living your life as if you have 100 years. See, but if you read the signs and understand the signs of the times, you will realize that you don't have a hundred years to play church. You don't have another five years to play church because we are living in the end days. We're living in the last days, not the end times. I'll share this later, but the last days and God is waking you up. And let me speak prophetically because I feel the fire so strong tonight. God is waking you up right now for a purpose. If you are in this broadcast, come on, I feel the fear of God and God has woke you up and God has anointed you and God has shooken you up and you stumble on the broadcast. You say, Isaiah, I just got saved or maybe you've been in church your whole life and you say, I just got lit on fire or maybe you're one of the pastors in the broadcast that say, I just got lit on fire again for God. I lost my passion, lost my fire. I want you to know that God has woke you up for such a time as this. Now, if you're in the broadcast and you're still drunk spiritually and you're still sleeping and your life is not turned over to Jesus Christ and the Lordship and you've not allowed the Holy Spirit to do a regenerative work in you, then friend, you are in danger right now. Now, let me talk to some of you young people that say, I just want to party it up. I just want to TikTok it up and live my life as much as I can. And then when I'm 30, I'll serve God. Friend, all of you young people, you don't have till you're 30. The days are short. The days are numbered. Now is the time. And I want to prophesy over some young people that God is waking you up so that you can wake up your generation. God is anointing you so that you can raise up a generation so you can be the trumpet that sounds, that you can sound the alarm. Because listen, the reason you, I've already told you is we have all the lights and all the cool stuff is because we want to reach the younger generation. But there's going to come a time where I am not as effective in reaching the young generation. And there's some of you that are 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 5, 6, 7, 8 in the chat. And God wants to use you in your gen. Well, I'm too young. Don't say you're too young, Jeremiah. Stop saying you're too young because the Bible says before you were in your mother's womb, God had already called you to be a prophet. So God says, I know you and you're not too young to do it. I have parents say, well, my kid's only 12. They're too young to cast out demons. And in my mind, I'm going like, if they're 12 and they're too young to cast out demons, yet you let them kill people on video games, shoot people on video games. I mean, this is how twisted we are. They're not too young. They don't have a junior Holy Ghost. Come on, let's break 3,000. We're at 2,500. They don't have a junior Holy Ghost. They have the same spirit that raised Christ. So I want you to know it's no accident that you stumbled onto our channel. It's no accident you had a dream of Jesus appearing to you saying he's coming back. Now, I don't know if you know this, there is a, I would call it a phenomenon going on right now where many people in the last several months have had dreams of Jesus appearing saying he's coming back soon. In fact, in the last week, I've heard four or five people message me and stories of people saying, I had a dream of Jesus and Jesus said he's coming back. Now, you tell me if people all over the world are having dreams of Jesus, Jesus is appearing to them saying, I'm coming back soon. Do you think it's just a coincidence? And these are not church people, y'all. These are rappers. These are celebrities. These are people that are on drugs, people that are addicted to alcohol, people that are religious. And the Lord is visiting people all over the world to bring them to repentance because we truly are living in the last days. Jesus truly is coming back. It's brought them to repentance. And this is what it's all about. It's bringing people to repentance, that we would repent of our sins and put our faith in Christ. If you get freaked out listening to end time events, listening to the antichrist, listening to the tribulation, it should produce a healthy fear for you to repent and to put your faith in Christ. And you gotta understand that's why everything we teach is intentional to point people to Christ, to put your faith in Jesus. Because at the end of the day, the judgment of salvation, where we get decided whether we go to heaven or hell is based on the faith you put in Christ. So the book of Revelation, again, is what we're going to be talking about. But I wanna emphasize something as we start talking about it. When we talk about the book of Revelation, this is not the revelation of the Antichrist. This is not the revelation of end time events. The book of Revelation, write this down, is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's all about knowing him. It's all about getting closer to him. And I am on a lifelong pursuit to getting to know the person of Jesus Christ. I want to know him like I've never known him. I want to encounter him like I've never encountered him. I'm 10 years into this, friend, and I am more in love with God right now than I've ever been. And God is looking for some people that would fall in love with him, looking for some people that would serve him, that would say, Lord, I will do whatever you want me to do. I will go wherever you want me to go. My life is not my own. And some of you tonight in the chat, 
your problem is this you still think your life belongs to you and god says your life does not belong to you your life is not your own but i purchased you with royal blood and your life is mine that i've given you life so that you can give your life back to me and so i'm telling you right now i want to know god everything i talk about tonight is getting to know god better my goal in these teachings i've been doing on the end times is to make the end time events simple enough for normal Christians to understand. So we're not going to go so deep that you fall asleep, so complicated that you can't put it, apply it to your life, so deep that you need scuba gear. That is not my goal. That is not what I want these, these sessions to be that we've been doing for the last week and then probably next week. One of the reasons why so many of us are ignorant to end time events or we don't like end time teaching is because the teachers make it beyond grasp or beyond the grasp of normal Christians to understand or comprehend. So you got to pray for me because by the grace of God, I'm going to do it my best, preach it the best I can for it to make sense. Okay. And how you interpret end time events. These are not again, salvation issues. You are not saved based on whether you believe in pre-trib, mid-trib or post-trib. You are saved based upon putting your faith in Jesus Christ, having relationship with them, turning from your sins and being born again and following Jesus. So don't think like, oh, if I'm, if you're pre-trib, you're not saved and you're an enemy. That's not how it works, guys. Our, our salvation is based on the faith we put and the work that Jesus did on the cross and the fact that we put in faith and we believe that Christ died for our sins and we accept his finished work on the cross. So don't get all tied up. Don't get all angry. And for some of you that are like, I'm already set in my ways. I want you to look at scripture. Cause again, I'm going to give you over 50 and I want you to reconsider. And I'm telling you, if you'll actually take it serious and write these things down and take the word of God serious, you'll realize you might not be right as you thought you were. So when it comes to last days, we have to remember a key thing to the timing of the last days. It's not just one sign that's going to happen that Jesus talked about, but it's going to be a collection of signs. So what marks the last days, again, the end times and last days are separate. What marks marks the last days is not one thing is not a war happening is not a plague happening is not a false messiah happening is not a rumor of war is not the love of many but Jesus says here's the key to the last days to knowing to being sure that you're living in the last days the way you know is the collection of signs it's a divergence of signs so it's not just one thing breaking out but it's a pandemic it's rumors of war it's political powers being shifted it's all these other signs earthquakes famines these all uh, uh, together culminating are how we know we're living in the last days now throughout history there's been one sign or two signs but right now according to what jesus said in luke 21 we are seeing every sign take place and jesus said in luke 21 28 when you see all these things begin to happen then you know look up your salvation is near so jesus said it's not one or another but when you see a culmination of events happening so remember it's all these things happening at the same time then you need to understand that these your salvation is near so it's the collection of events now the end times and this is important as we go into this tonight and the last days are different the last days are the days leading up to the rapture and then the tribulation which i talked about last week the seven year period of the tribulation biblically is considered the end times. So the last days are what we're in now, which lead up to the rapture, then sparks the tribulation. The seven year period of tribulation is the end times. So we're gonna be discussing tonight end time events, but I believe, now if you wanna know, I believe we're living in the last days. First John 2 18 says, dear children, listen to what John says, dear children, the last hour is here. You've heard the Antichrist is coming and already many such Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that the last hour has come. So here's what John is saying. 2,000 years ago, listen to me closely tonight, guys. 2,000 years ago, John says, we are in the last hour of human history. The last hour. So could it be now, 2,000 years later, that we are in the final moments? Now we know the Bible says that one day is as a thousand and a thousand is as one day. So God's timing is much different than our timing. But if John was saying, in your Bible, inspired by the Holy Spirit, remember John being inspired by the Holy Spirit, is saying that the last hour is here. Now here's what John says. The Antichrist is coming, an actual literal person. Later we'll talk all about the Antichrist. The Antichrist is coming, but you have to realize many Antichrist 
lowercase though have already appeared and that's because there's a spirit of the antichrist i'll talk to you about later that is already alive in the earth daniel 12 1 says at that time michael the archangel who stands guard over your nation will arise then there will be a time of anguish greater than any since nations first came into existence but at that time every one of your people whose name is written in the book will be rescued okay again this is another sign that we will be rescued from the tribulation because daniel 12 1 Daniel is prophesying that there's going to be a time that is going to be the worst time in existence that the nations or the world has never seen. But anyone that has their name written in the book or believers will be rescued from this time. But you have to understand, uh, Daniel is talking about the end times, the tribulation. So the end times will be the most terrible time in history. Now, how do we know? Now, I know there's many of you that wrote me, say, Isaiah, we're already in the tribulation. We're already in the end times, not the last days. First of all, for the end times, the tribulation to even start, according to Daniel, there has to be a peace treaty signed with Israel. Second of all, when we're in the end times, the seven years of tribulation, which praise the Lord, I won't be there because I'm going to be serving God and he's going to rapture me if we are that generation. But you have to understand, no one's going to be surprised or like, I wonder if we're in the end times. So if you think we're in the tribulation, go listen to my video last week or go read the book of Revelation. Look at the seals, the trumpets, and the bowls, and you're going to know that we are not in the tribulation. There's no way you can try to connect what's happening in our world today with what's going on in the tribulations. And again, please understand tonight, I'm giving you Bible verses. I'm not giving you an opinion. I'm not giving you some conspiracy theory YouTube channel that you're addicted to. I'm giving you Bible verses because I could, I could want the tribulation to have started or I could want to believe a certain public figure is the Antichrist, but I have to look to Scripture and I have to understand that Scripture interprets Scripture, that the Bible makes it clear what the tribulation will be like. Daniel tells of a seven-year period, but it also shows us throughout the tribulation the trumpets, the seals, and the bowls that are going to be poured out. So you're not going to be living in the end times like, I wonder if it's the end times. Now, the only way you're going to be is if you don't read the Bible. And the only way that you'll believe, again, we could still be friends if you don't agree with this that we're in the tribulation now is that you don't read the bible because here's what's going to happen when you open up your bible and you turn off conspiracy theory youtube channels you're going to realize the signs of the tribulation are not happening right now they're just not happening right now so you have to understand we're in the last days right now according to scripture but we're not in the tribulation or the end times this will be the most terrible time in human history when i say terrible it's an understatement you can watch the last week's video and everyone's going to know the time now here's the question many of you ask i want to answer tonight is what is the purpose behind the tribulation like why is god pouring out his wrath why is there fire falling from heaven boils on people locusts for five months torturing people 200 million soldiers that are going to kill half the earth why is it if god is loving and god is just why is this possible because you have to understand that the seven year period of absolute terror and chaos is not just a time of random coincidence it's a time where god has a purpose and a plan and is god loving absolutely but god is also just so the justice of god and the wrath of god is going to be poured out and there's two major reasons why god is going to allow and be the cause of the tribulation now remember again when the the wrath is being poured out the bowls are being poured out this is very very important the trumpets are sounding and the uh, tr uh, judgments are happening the seal judgments where people are getting killed all that stuff's happening this is god causing these judgments so don't think it's the antichrist or the devil that's killing everybody and causing these things the antichrist will kill a lot of people but understand that this is god allowing these things and the number one main reason is this is the time of judgment so the tribulation the seven years of chaos is time for god to judge the earth the bible calls the tribulation and zephaniah 1 15 the day of wrath isaiah 2 12 calls it the day of reckoning revelation 14 7 calls it the hour of judgment and the bottom line is the sin of the world demands a response from god by nature the bible talks about that whatever you reap whatever you sow you will reap that the justice of god cannot be mocked so if you do something sinful if you're not under the blood of jesus you've not repented you come under by default the judgment of god and god will have his way now over and over through scripture you're going to see the people of god looking at the carnality the sinfulness the abortion murder all that and saying lord why is it the wicked get away with this and you do nothing so what happens is because the wicked we think are getting away with sin and murder and everything they're doing 
I have to be careful what I say because I'll get flagged here. But all the darkness, we look at that right now, right? And we say, God, how can you allow abortion? How can you allow murder? How can you allow? But you think that they're just getting away with it. But what you have to understand is there is going to come a time of judgment. The tribulation is God judging the earth. Proverbs eleven twenty one 21 says God is just and he can't let sin go unpunished. Again, I'm paraphrasing all these for the sake of time. So the, and the Bible also says God is slow to anger, but his power is great and he never lets the guilty go unpunished. That's Nahum 1, 3. So the guilty will never go away and punish. Now, Jesus came to take on the wrath of God. Understand that you deserved the entire brunt of the wrath of God, separation from the Father, and eternity in hell. That's what you deserve. We've all fallen short. Jesus took on the wrath of God so that we didn't have to take it. Another reason why I can't, I just can't get into mid-trib because I can't imagine Jesus taking on the wrath of God and then me going through another period of the wrath of God through the tribulation. Jesus took on the penalty. It also says that God has set a day for judging the world. That's in Acts 17, 31. That's God setting apart a day for judging the world. Eventually the people of the world are going to pay a price for the sin. And the tribulation is the time. I know you don't like this because you have a foo-foo rainbow banner Jesus but the tribulation is the time that God has set aside to judge the world now many of you think that the, that's harsh of God and you don't understand truly how wicked the world is the Bible says in Proverbs 16 2 everyone is justified in his own eyes but Proverbs 21 2 says but God sees the heart so the Bible also says in Romans 3 10 that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and in Ephesians 1 7 it's only by the blood of Jesus you can be forgiven so you need to understand only by the blood of Jesus we can be forgiven of our sins and John 3 18 talks about that anyone who rejects Jesus remains under the judgment of God so everybody has this theory that now that we're in the new testament god is no longer judging people people no longer come under the judgment of god that's wrong john 3 18 tells us if you don't accept jesus if you don't remain in jesus you are already under the judgment of god so the judgment of god is not gone away but if we accept jesus we don't come under judgment so what happens isaiah to the five billion people or the six billion people i don't know how many people there will be when tribulation starts that haven't accepted christ they by default will come under the judgment of God. And if they're alive in this period, they will have to withstand the full brunt of the wrath of God. But the Bible says in Romans 8, 1, and I've already given you 10 verses and we're in the first few minutes. There is no judgment for those that remain in Christ. There's no condemnation also for those that are in Christ. So if you are a believer, now here's what I don't understand. I know there's a lot of you that were arguing with me and praise the Lord. It's okay. I, I, you can argue all that stuff. I don't mind that because I want you to be a free thinker. I don't want you to just think because Isaiah Saldivar told you, but it's like you are, you're, you so want to be in the tribulation. I don't understand this. Like God has saved you from wrath. He's given you his only son. And you're so convinced and angry that I said pre-trib. Like people are like, we're not pre-trib. We're mid-trib and post-trib. I'm like, listen, y'all, if you want to be here during the tribulation, pray that God would leave you here. But I'm trying to take the first ticket out. I am not trying to live through the time of tribulation if I don't have to. And you might say, well, how will people get saved? I'm about to show you how people are going to get saved in the tribulation. But you got to realize, I don't know why you want to go through suffering. Like, I don't understand why the church people are like, I want to go through the tribulation. I want to be under the wrath of God as if like Jesus, what he did wasn't enough. So will there be a twinkling of an eye, Jesus taking us and Jesus rapturing us? According to scripture and the timeline of scripture, absolutely, I believe it. I gave seven, six reasons why you can go watch the video later, but you need to understand the end times generation are going to remain under the judgment of God. They're going to reject Jesus. And here's what Revelation 16, 9 says. They will even curse God. Guys, here's the crazy part. After the tribulation, after every seal, every trumpet, every bowl, they're still going to reject Jesus. Paul says that they're only going to love money themselves, be boastful, be proud, be disobedient, be ungrateful be undisciplined, be unloving, be unforgiving, and all these other things in 2 Timothy chapter 3, he talks about these people that are angry, they're bitter, and Revelation 16 shows us that even after everything, now some of you are like, if my family member that's stubborn saw a miracle, they'd get saved. If my family member that's stubborn saw deliverance, they'd get saved. But I want you to understand, these people are going to see seven years of tribulation, half the world's going to die and they're still the bible says at the end of revelation are going to curse and mock god so the end time generation and i hate to say it but it's the truth are going to deserve every bit of god's wrath and history also shows us that god's wrath is certain it's not a maybe in noah's day what happened 
God destroyed the earth with a flood. And what was God's reason? Genesis 6, 11, the earth was filled with violence. And the Bible says in Genesis 6, 5, that their thoughts were continuously evil. So if you're like, how could God kill all these people? God did it in the flood. So God judged the world and dest destroyed everyone in the world except for Noah and his family because God was judging unrighteousness. Now, since the flood, you say, well, that was before the flood, God promised. Now God promised not to flood the earth, but God did not promise not to judge the earth because after the flood, Genesis 19, God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Also in Jeremiah 32, God used Nebuchadnezzar to bring judgment on Israel for worshiping false God and idols in Daniel 5. He brought judgment on King Belshazzar of Babylon and he'll bring judgment on the end time generation. So don't think that God is not gonna bring judgment. The tribulation is a time of God's judgment. And even though, now listen to me closely, okay? This is not all down tonight. Even though God is pouring out his wrath for seven years, his primary purpose, write this down, is not to destroy his primary purpose is to save people let me say that again even though god for seven years is pouring out the worst wrath that the earth will ever see it's not to destroy but to save the tribulation will have one of two impacts there will only be one of two things are going to happen either people are going to harden their hearts during the tribulation that's going to be one crowd or people are going to turn for to god for mercy so the react the first the response is God's judgment becomes punishment. The second response is God's judgment becomes a blessing. Think about this. The judgment of God in the tribulation actually becomes the blessing of God because of the judgment, people are going to turn to God to escape the wrath to come. And the Bible says in Isaiah 26, nine, when the people of the earth experience judgment, the world will learn righteousness. Think about that. Let me say that again. When the people of the earth experience judgment, the world learns righteousness. Isaiah 26, nine. So understand that as God judges the earth, come on, we just broke 3000, share the broadcast. As God judges the earth, he brings people into salvation and righteousness. So you have to decide whether you're going to come under the judgment of God or you're going to turn to God. And again, why is it that we have to go through all of this, learn all this before we're willing to submit to God? So reason number one is the tribulation is for the judgment of God. Reason number two is the tribulation is a time for the lost to be saved. There, oh, I felt the Holy Ghost fire. There is going to be a salvation explosion during the tribulation. Because remember, God wants everyone to be saved. According to John 6, 39, he does not want a single person. I'm reading the chat right now. He doesn't want a single person to be lost. Remember what Peter said. He said, Jesus is not being slow and returning as some people think. He's being patient for our sake because he doesn't want anyone to perish, but wants everyone to repent that's second peter 3 9 so you have to understand that during the tribulation there will be the greatest revival of human history where i believe over i believe over a billion souls are going to be saved so is this terrible time absolutely is there torment and torture and death and chaos yes but it'll be the greatest time of revival ever in human history this is going to be now all the shocking events of the locusts of the 200 person 200 million person army of the blood raining of every animal in the sea dying of the rivers turning to blood the great earthquake the sun dying out the stars falling from the sky everything i described last week is exactly what the world's going to need to awaken from their slumber god is going to use the tribulation listen to me closely to grab the attention of the world now how do you know this because everybody knows that when tragedy strikes people turn to God. Look at the people of Nineveh. Job warned them, gets up in front of Nineveh and says, God is going to destroy the city. God is going to judge Nineveh. And what happens? The Bible says in Jonah 3, 5, that the people turn from their evil ways. And instead of pouring out judgment, God released unprecedented revival. What caused the people to turn from their sin in Nineveh and turn to God? It was the impending doom. It was the impending judgment. Now there's many of you that got saved because you learned about the judgment of God. People wrote me, I got saved last week, learning about the judgment of God. Now how could learning about the judgment of God get someone saved? Because to escape judgment, we cling onto the cross, which is our only escape. There's no other life raft, life raft, there's no other lifeboat, and there's no other escape of the judgment of God but through turning to Jesus. Because remember, according to Deuteronomy 8.10, when times are good, people forget God. And you know this, when everything's going good, you don't remember God. We don't need God. But the moment we experience trial, the moment we experience trouble, we seek God out. When everything gets crumbled, when you're shaken, every time something tra tragic happens, 
Everyone wants to turn to God, whether it's a car accident, whether it's a sickness, whether you think you might be having a baby with your girlfriend, come on, somebody help me. And you're like, Lord, if you deliver me from this, I'll serve you. Guys, I lost track when I was an atheist. I didn't believe in God, which I think I was really agnostic, but I just thought it was cool to be an atheist. When I was like, there's no God, God's not real, God doesn't care about me. I cannot count how many times I was in a bad time in my life or something happened or I thought my girlfriend might be pregnant or I was gonna get in a car accident or something traumatic happened. And I would say, Lord, if you do this, I'll never this again. I'll never this again. I'll serve you, I'll serve you. Every time something bad would happen, I'd be like, Lord, I'll serve you. I'll follow you. I'll do anything because troubling times have a way of turning us to God. So remember, during the tribulation, many will turn to God. Remember, Jesus told the parable about the two men. He said, one man built his house on solid rock. The other man built his house on shifting sand. When the storm came, the house on solid rock stood firm, but the house on shifting sand came crashing down. The tribulation is going to be a massive storm where everyone who lives through it that put their money in trust and people and idols and false gods are going to realize they live their lives on sand. So it's going to be, again, the greatest time of revival the earth has ever seen. The Bible says in Revelation 7, 9, a vast crowd of people, too num numerous to count, from every people, language and nation will commit themselves to Jesus. There's going to be a vast crowd of people that got saved during the tribulation. Again, I'm pre-trib, so I don't believe the church will be here. Now, let me say something very, very clear. If you read the book of Revelation and you're not pre-trib, you're mid-trib or post-trib, there's one very interesting thing. You're going to see the church of Jesus Christ in Revelation 2, Revelation 3. After the seven letters to the churches in the book of Revelation, you're not going to see the church throughout Revelation any longer. You're going to see believers, because someone wrote me and said, well, how is there believers if we get raptured? Those are believers that got saved after the rapture, during the tribulation. Listen to me, friend. The moment everyone disappears in the rapture, the moment we're taken up to meet with him in the air, how many people do you think are going to cry out to God? How many millions of people are you going to think are going to cry out to say, Lord, save me, deliver me? Because remember, these people grew up in church. They knew the stories of the rapture and they're going to get saved. I could imagine, and let me just guess, hundreds, I, I would just guess, hundreds of millions right after the rapture are going to get saved. I, I believe this because they're going to say, all these people got taken. The Bible's true. God is real. We want to serve you and they're going to repent and they're going to turn to God. So that's why you're going to see Christians in the tribulation, but you're not going to see, again, this is, I'm just giving you the Bible. If you don't like it, just send me a verse. You're not going to see in Revelation 2 and Revelation 3, the seven churches in the tribulation. You do not see the church of Thyatira. You do not see the church of Ephesus. You don't see any churches or references to God's church because they've already been taken. The Holy Spirit has been moved aside so that the Antichrist can rise up in power. Remember when Jesus, when the disciples asked Jesus, what is the sign of your return? Matthew 24, 14. He says, and the good news will be preached to the whole world so that all nations will hear it and then the end will come. So think about this. Now I want you to think about, because I've never really thought about this until I was studying Matthew 24. Jesus is telling the disciples, this is going to be the sign of my return. Everyone's going to hear the gospel, the entire world. Now, this is not the rapture. This is the, the coming of the Lord, which we'll talk about probably next week, where Jesus comes back, establishes a throne, reigns for a thousand years on the earth, and then relets out Satan to tempt the world, okay? Jesus is saying, when I come back there, the entire world is going to have, have heard the gospel, then I'll come back. That A lot of that hearing the gospel is going to be through the tribulation. Now, think about this. Jesus is a carpenter turned preacher. He wasn't rich. He didn't have political power. He wasn't a hero to society. He's living during a time of no internet, no TV, no radio. And he's telling the disciples there, oh, I feel the fire of God. There is going to come a time where every single person in the world is going to hear this message. And the disciples are going, how is that possible? You're a carpenter turned preacher. We don't even honestly know why we're following you. And you're telling us one day the entire world is going to hear the gospel. He was talking about a message that was so powerful, so life changing, so explosive that this message was going to be reached in the entire world someday. Every person would hear the gospel, friend, and I long for the day where every single ear has heard the gospel. But understand the disciples did not know how big the world was. Much of the world was not discovered. But think about this. From those 12 men that Jesus preached and trained, 
There is an estimated, in 2015, there was a, a consensus done on a survey. Okay, I don't know how accurate it is, but this is what they said. In 2015, there was an estimated 2.3 billion Christians worldwide, okay? Maybe that number's off. Let's just say 2 billion. From 12 people to an estimated 2.3 billion Christians in 2,000 years, that is an incredible thing that right now on the earth, there's two plus billion people that label themselves as Christians. And this is a testament to Jesus saying that everyone's going to hear the gospel. Remember, the disciples didn't know how big the world is. They just knew. Now, in the book of Acts, we see a gospel explosion, and the disciples begin to spread the message of Jesus. Now, this is interesting. Thousands of years later, it's May 10th of 2021, and right now, think about this, 2,000 years later, I'm on this broadcast spreading the message of Jesus Christ to 3178 of you, and a million people a week are hearing the gospel through our broadcast. This is now 2,000 years later. We're still getting the message out to the four corners of the earth. And there's people tonight that have never heard the gospel that are going are hearing the gospel for the first time. That is a testimony to the power of God, to the fact that Jesus Christ, everything he said was true. He's not a man that he should lie. He's just, and what he said was right. So the tribulation is going to be the greatest time of revival in history. Nothing ever like this is ever going to happen or happen since. There's going to be an explosion of signs and wonders and miracles. Now, during the tribulation, there's going to be 144,000 witnesses, according to Revelation 7, 4, 12,000 from each tribe. God is going to raise up that are going to preach the gospel through the tribulation. So you say, well, how are people going to get uh, the gospel if the church is raptured? There's going to be 144,000 with a seal. God is going to mark them with a seal, and they are going to be Jewish evangelists that are going to preach the gospel. Now, do we know who they are? Do we know if they're alive? I don't know, and I'm not going to get, again, tonight, I'm not going to get all deep and crazy and confuse you. This is, how could we make this relevant to our life today? But just know there's going to be over 100,000, 144 to be exact, thousand witnesses, the Bible says, that are going to be sharing the gospel. Now, these 144,000 evangelists are not going to be by themselves. These are also going to have two witnesses with them also preaching. And write this down, Revelation 14, 6, the Bible says, and I saw another angel flying through the sky, carrying the eternal good news to proclaim to the people, those who belong to the world, to every nation, language, tribe, and people. So John is seeing in Revelation 14, guys, we're already in the tribulation. John is seeing an angel preaching the gospel. He said, I saw an angel flying through the sky. Think about this. The, oh, I, I get chills, guys. I got so I get chills talking about this. An angel is flying through the sky, John says, carrying the eternal good news to proclaim to the people who belong to the world. Who are the people he's proclaiming to? The unsaved people, Revelation 14, 6. They belong to this world. Every nation, every tribe, every language, every people. And now angels are flying around broadcasting the gospel message. I'm telling you, I felt the Holy Ghost. People are going to get saved in the tribulation. It'll be an amazing time. It'll be an amazing time. Will it be terror and chaos? Yes, but there'll be a revival happening during the tribulation. Okay, not only will it be 144,000, there will be the angels preaching. There's also going to be two witnesses, and I'm giving you reasons why if the church goes, how are people going to get saved? These two witnesses, the Bible says, are going to have supernatural power to perform miraculous signs. They're going to have supernatural power. They're not going to have natural power. These are going to be two supernatural witnesses. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us their names. Some believe it's Elijah and Enoch because Elijah and Enoch are the two people in the Bible that never died. Others believe it's Elijah and Moses, because remember, Elijah and Moses appeared on the Mount Transfiguration. But remember, this is just theory and study. It's not scripture. The Bible doesn't say who they are, but the Bible does describe their power. Listen to what the Bible says. It says the two witnesses are going to perform miracles similar to Elijah and Moses. They're going to have the power to shut the sky so no rain will fall. Okay, and they, as they prophesied, and that's Revelation 11, 6. Now remember, Elijah, and this is why people believe it could be Elijah or Moses. Elijah had that same power when he told Ahab, there will be no rain or dew for the next few years. And that's in 1 Kings 17, 1. So again, these two witnesses are going to have the power to stop rain from happening. Elijah, remember in 1 Kings 17, 1, stopped the rain. The two witnesses also are going to have the power, according to Revelation 11:6. they They're going to also have the power 
to turn rivers and oceans into blood, okay? So not only can they stop rain, but they're also going to be witnessing and have power to turn rivers and oceans into blood. This was also, think about this, the power Moses had. Because in Exodus 7.20, remember, Moses turned the Nile and all the water in Egypt into blood. So this is interesting on how you can kind of like connect the dots that it might be, again, we don't know, but it might be Elijah and Moses. Now, others believe it's going to be Elijah and Enoch, and that's because neither of them died. Both were taken to heaven, a fiery chariot chariot picked up Elijah in 2 Kings 2.11, and God called Enoch just to be home in Genesis 5.24. So neither of them died, and Moses did die. So that's one theory. People say, well, it couldn't be Moses because Deuteronomy 34.5, Moses died, and the Bible says in Hebrews 9.27 that it's appointed for every man to die once, and so how could Moses come back if everyone dies only one time? Elijah didn't die, Enoch didn't die. I don't know. To me, studying the Bible, my opinion logically is that it's Elijah and Enoch, but I can't tell you for certain because the Bible doesn't say. But just know there's going to be two powerful witnesses that are going to do signs and wonders. Again, because the end time people and the world are going to hate God, they're also going to hate the two witnesses. And that's because the witnesses are going to bring judgments on the earth on God's behalf. The witnesses are going to have power, again, to shut the heavens. They're going to have power to turn rivers and oceans into blood. And they're going to be the source of the world's frustration. And here's why the world's going to hate them and be so frustrated. The Bible says that the witnesses cannot be killed. Think about this. They will literally be unkillable. So imagine the armies of the world. Imagine the people in the world shooting them, hitting them with rockets, whatever technology we're going to have in the tribulation. Revelation 11.5 says, no, they're not going to be able to get harmed. Nothing can kill them. Um, I'm sorry. Revelation 11.5 says fire will come from their mouths and destroy anyone who tries to hurt them. So say a tank, an army military tank shows up as those witnesses are in the street and shoots a, a rocket at it. The witnesses are unharmed, and here's the witnesses' response. Fire is going to come out of their mouth, and the Bible says, destroy anyone who tries to hurt them. That's Revelation 11.5. So understand the power that these two witnesses are going to have to preach the gospel with signs and wonders. Now, the Bible says after the witnesses complete their testimony, the Antichrist is going to kill them. And this is going to happen, the Bible talks about, in the middle of the tribulation, because the ministry of the two witnesses only lasts three and a half years, Revelation 11.3. Once the Antichrist kills the two witnesses, the Bible says their bodies will lie unburied in the main street of Jerusalem. That's Revelation 11, 8. So they're going to die. The Antichrist will kill them because remember, no one else has power to kill them. Their testimony's done. They're going to have years. Their bodies are going to lie in the streets of Jerusalem. The Bible says in Revelation 11:9, 9, the entire world is going to look at their bodies dead. The world is going to celebrate in Revelation 11:10, 10, give each other gifts. So think about this. The world hates God so much. They hate the testimony of Jesus Christ so much. They hate Christians so much that when the, the, the witnesses die, the people are going to celebrate and give each other gifts because the witnesses have died. It'll be a time of great jubilation. The people will declare a holiday because, the, think about this, the two men that tormented them will be dead. There's going to be a national holiday dedicated to the two men who have tormented the earth with judgment being dead. But here's what happens after three days of celebration. Now, they should have already known because they killed Jesus. They should have already known that after three days, nothing good could happen except for them being raised from the dead. Something unexpected happens. The Bible says that after, I get goosebumps, John. Everyone's like, I have goosebumps. I do too. The Bible says that after three days, the two men are going to rise to their feet and stand up. They're going to be dead in the street for three days. Their bodies are going to be in the road. Revelation 11, 11 says they're going to stand up and they're going to be in full view of the whole world. Now the whole world is going to see them. And in Revelation 11, 12, it says they're going to ascend into heaven. Their departure is going to bring a great earthquake. A tenth of Jerusalem will be destroyed according to Revelation 11, 13. But this is going to end the celebrations. Instead of joy, the people are going to be filled with terror. So the world's going to go from being joyous to now they're going to raise from the dead in front of the whole world. They're going to ascend into heaven. And the Bible says the whole world in Revelation 11, 13, is going to break out in terror, okay? And then we know there's going to be a person on the scene. This is going to be, this man's going to rise up. So that will be the gospel explosion. But now I want to talk to you about the rise of the Antichrist. Here's what you need to understand. The, the spirit of the Antichrist and the person of the Antichrist are different things. The spirit of the Antichrist is already working. Someone said, well, the Antichrist is already here because 1 John 4, 2. But understand the spirit is different than the person. 1 John 4, 2 says, 
This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God, that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God, this is the spirit of the Antichrist. What you heard is coming and even now is in the world. So Jesus is not talking, I'm sorry, John is not talking about a literal Antichrist. John is saying there's a spirit of the Antichrist. Now the word Antichrist, very simple, write this down, it means to go against Christ. So the spirit of the Antichrist goes against the teachings and the works of Jesus. Anyone who does not acknowledge, write this down, anyone that does not acknowledge Jesus in the way the Bible represents him is working in an Antichrist spirit. So if we produce a Jesus in our churches, listen to me very closely, that does not heal the sick, that does not call us to repentance, that does not ask us to lay down our lives, that does not ask us to bear our cross, that does not drive out demons even today, that does not preach a narrow road, our church is working in an antichrist spirit. And so John is saying to believers, the spirit of the antichrist is already at work, okay? So that's the spirit of the antichrist. Now the person of the antichrist, we don't know who they are yet. The Bible doesn't tell us who they are, but it kind of gives us some conditions. So years before the return of Christ, because remember the seven year tribulation, at the end of the tribulation, right after Armageddon, then the Lord's gonna come back. But listen to this, years before the return of Christ, during the tribulation, a literal man is gonna rise up. Now we're talking about the literal man, not the spirit. He's gonna be called, he's gonna be the antichrist and he's going to rule the entire world. Now the Bible calls him the little horn, in Daniel 7, 8, the fierce king in Daniel 8, 23, a master of intrigue in Daniel 8, 23, the prince of who is to come in Daniel 9, 26, the worthless shepherd in Zechariah 11, 17, the man of lawlessness in 2 Thessalonians 2, 8, the son of destruction in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, the despicable person in Daniel 11, 21, the willful king in Daniel 11, 36, the abomination in Matthew 24, 15, and the beast. and Revelation 13, 11, this is a literal person of the Antichrist. And he's going to come, the Bible says, from among the 10 kings. Now, again, I'm trying to, I'm trying to not go too deep and too crazy because I don't want to be, you could be confused and click off here. But in Daniel 7, 7 through 8, we're, we know that the Antichrist is going to emerge from a group of 10 kings. Now, you might say, who are the 10 kings? These are the leaders of the 10 nations in the end times. I'm not going to go into the 10 nations another day, another video, but these are the leaders of the 10 nations that are going to rise up and they're going to build an alliance that will eventually become the revived Roman Empire. So the Roman Empire will be a new Roman Empire is going to come to power. The Antichrist will then come on the scene and he's going to be not one of the 10 kings, but he's going to come from among the 10 kings, okay? The Bible doesn't say why, but it says that these 10 kings are going to give the Antichrist their power that's in revelation 17 12 so you have 10 nations that are going to be revived and reformed in the end times the antichrist is going to come out of one of the 10 so that's why no one knows is he going to come from here come from here again i'm not going to go into the 10 nations but he's going to rise out of them now he's not going to be a king of one of the nations but he's going to rise out in revelation 17 12 says that the kings are going to give him power he's also going to rise in political power and three out of the 10 kings of these revived nations, I know some of you talk too fast, it's okay, you can go rewatch it on half speed. Praise the Lord. One of these, uh, three of the, out of the 10 kings are gonna actually oppose the Antichrist, the Bible says, but he's going to strip them of their power and take over their nations by force. So this is the greatest world leader. He's a one world leader. He's gonna have incredible political power. He's gonna be fierce. He's gonna hate God and he's going to rule the nations. Now, what is he gonna be like? The Bible says he's gonna be strong, but not of his own power. That's in Daniel 8, 24. Where does the power of the Antichrist come from? How is he so powerful? Revelation 13, 2. His power comes from Satan. And this satanic power that he has, Satan's going to give him power. Some people actually believe Satan's going to fill the Antichrist. I lean towards that because of scriptures. But again, I'll talk about that a little bit in, in a little bit here because we're already 50 minutes in. But his satanic power is going to give him the ability to perform miracles. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 10 talks about that. For example, Revelation 13, 13 says he's going to call down fire from heaven. 
He's going to be armed with Satan's power. The Antichrist will be the greatest warlord and general the world has ever seen. The Bible says he'll cause a shocking amount of destruction and he'll succeed in everything he does in Daniel 8, 24. He'll be so powerful. Think about this. He'll be so powerful. He'll attack heavenly beings and trample on them. That's what Daniel 8, 10 tells us. He's going to trample heavenly beings. He's even going to try to take on Jesus Christ directly in Daniel 8, 25. He's going to try to war against Jesus Christ. Now, he's going to be the ruler of the revived Roman Empire, which will be the, the, the one world order. He's going to have unprecedented power. The Bible says in Revelations 13, 7, he's going to rule every tribe, tribe, every people, every language, and every nation. He's going to control the ability to buy and sell everything on earth. Revelation 13, 16. He's going to have the world thinking he's invincible. Who, and they're going to say this, who's as powerful as the Antichrist? Who can make war against the beast? That's Revelation 13, 4. So the Antichrist can be so powerful, so violent, the world's going to come against him. I mean, the world's not going to know who can beat him. He's going to be arrogant and prideful. The Bible says that he's going to be boasting arrogantly in Daniel 7, 8. He claims he's greater than God in Daniel 11, 36. And John says he's the beast who speaks great blasphemies against God in Revelation 13, 5. When asked about the end times, Jesus said the time will come that you the time will come when you see what Daniel the prophet spoke about, the sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing in the holy place, as in Matthew 24, 16. So the Antichrist is going to fulfill the prophecy. Listen to me closely. He's gonna stand in the Jewish temple and he's going to proclaim to be God. And that's in 2 Thessalonians 2, 4. He's going to set up an image of the holy place and he's going to demand people to worship the image. That's in Daniel 9, 27. He's going to claim to be God and the whole world is going to worship him. Revelation 13, 4. So are you guys seeing this? This is a man that is trying to take the place of God and be God himself and rule over the entire world. The Antichrist is going to exalt himself over everything that is God and is worshiped. The Bible says that he's going to rule over the most terrible time in human history. He'll succeed in everything he does. The world will not only follow the Antichrist, but the world is going to worship the Antichrist. Now, why would the world worship the Antichrist? Because he's going to be seen as a political redeemer. Now, remember, the first century Jewish people looked at Jesus this way. They were not looking for someone to save their souls. They were looking for someone to deliver them from the cruel hand of the Roman Empire. They wanted a new Moses. And so they thought that Jesus was going to relieve them of their suffering. And the Bible says they mourned his death thinking he failed. So the reason they mourned the death of Jesus, they thought, he failed in rescuing them from the Roman Empire. But Jesus was saying, you guys don't understand. I didn't come to set you free in the natural. I, come to, I came to set you free in the spiritual. So you have to understand it was only during the resurrection they understood the purpose of Jesus' coming. He was not a worldly conqueror. Jesus could have blinked and the world could have been destroyed. He's not. He didn't come to conquer the world. The first coming, he came to be a spiritual sa savior. The second coming, he's coming to destroy and to rule every king, every tribe, and every wicked nation. That's why he came back the first time as a don on a donkey. When a king would ride in a city, they would ride a donkey to declare peace. But the Bible says he's coming back on a horse because if a king rode in a city, it means they were there to declare war on the nation. That is why Jesus came as a, on a donkey the first time, and he's coming back as a war lord on a horse. Okay? The Antichrist, is he going to show up one day and take over the world? And how will we know where he's going to come from or who he's going to be? Now, we don't know, again, who he's going to be, what tribe he's going to come from, what nation he's going to come from. But we do know that he's going to perform a specific act. The Bible talks about that he's going to rise to power and he's going to sign a peace treaty with Israel. The treaty is going to last seven years and the signing of the peace treaty will kick off the tribulation. That's in Daniel 9, 27. Now, the Bible doesn't give us any other details on the peace treaty. It doesn't even tell us why Israel signs the agreement, but they do. Are you going to be confused? If you're a believer during the tribulation or you're here and you get saved after, are you going to be confused? Absolutely not. Because once he signs the peace treaty, you're going to know that he rises in power. Now, Isaiah, is it possible that the Antichrist is alive right now? Now, it's possible. Maybe he's a kid right now. I don't know. But... It's not possible that anyone that right now is a ruler or a leader is the Antichrist. At least he hasn't been revealed. So for all of you in the chat that think the Antichrist is Bill Gates or the Pope, 
Guys, the Antichrist is going to be a one world leader that's going to rule over the entire world that's going to sign a treaty with Israel. Now, has any of them signed a treaty with Israel? No. So biblically, we cannot say, like you guys say in the comments, that Bill Gates or the Pope or whatever, Biden or whoever you think the Antichrist is, biblically, the Antichrist has not been revealed yet because remember, the Holy Spirit has to, I know you guys keep spamming the Pope this entire time. The Holy Spirit has to be removed before the Antichrist will reign to power. He's also going to change sacred laws and festivals. He's going to enter the temple and declare himself God. He's going to conquer the world. He's going to wield a mighty sword. One fourth of humanity is going to die either by the sword, famine, disease, or wild beast. He's, his global war of conquest will result in the entire worldwide famine. So this guy is, is harsh. He's a ruler. The Bible says in Revelation 6, 5, food will be so expensive, a day's wages will only buy enough food to survive. So you have to work a 12 hour shift just to buy food for that day to survive. So that's going to be what it's going to look like as the Antichrist rules to power. Revelation 13, 7 says the Antichrist will wage war on God's holy people. And who are God's holy people? People that believe in Jesus, people that serve God. And the main target of the Antichrist is the Christian community. And in Daniel 8, 24, it talks about the persecution towards the church, towards the believers. In Revelation 13, 4, the Antichrist is going to demand worship. In Revelation 24, that's chapter 20, verse 4. He's going to behead those that don't comply. And one of his main desires and main goals is to keep people from serving Jesus and listening to the testimony of Jesus. And his ultimate goal, the ultimate goal of the Antichrist is to wage war against Jesus. Again, he's going to be the most powerful person that's ever lived, most powerful dictator that's ever lived. Now, it's hard to believe that there's going to be someone with this much global power but the Bible says that it's going to happen and he's going to attack the Lord's anointed. The Bible says he's going to gather the earth together to war against God and the Antichrist is going to fight against Jesus himself. Now, 2 Thessalonians 2.8 says the man of lawlessness will be revealed, but the Lord Jesus will slay him with the breath of his mouth and destroy him by the splendor of his coming. Now, if you ask who the Antichrist is, nobody knows, everyone for years. If you go online, people thought it was Hitler. People thought it was this. They've speculated for years and years to come. We know in 2 Thessalonians 2, 7, for the Antichrist to be revealed, the Holy Spirit, the restrainer must be removed. So there has to be a removing of the Antichrist. Okay, I want to talk to you, and then we're going to go into communion one particular event that's going to happen at the end of the tribulation that is the battle of armageddon and then probably next week we'll go into like eternal rewards the thousand year reign of christ or whatever else but i want to talk to you quickly before we end on the battle of armageddon now most people think armageddon because of the movies is the end of humanity but the bible actually talks much different about the armageddon it's the armageddon the battle of armageddon is not a battle between people and it's not the end of the human race it's actually a place where all the world's armies are going to gather for a global war. Armageddon is literally the place that's going to host the most intense battle the world has ever seen. And um, this is where the armies are going to gather, gather at Armageddon. The armies are going to gather to war against the Lord. So at the end of the tribulation, okay, we're at the end of the tribulation. All the armies of the world are going to gather to Armageddon in preparation for war. That's Revelation 16, 16 and Revelation 19, 19. And they're going to come under one direction of the Antichrist and the false prophet, which the false prophet is a different person. We'll talk about that on a later day because there's a lot to talk about when it comes to the false prophet. Basically, the false prophet is an aid to the Antichrist to get the world to serve and worship the Antichrist. Okay. Revelation 16, 13 through 16 talks about it. The Euphrates River is going to dry up to pave the way for the armies of the kings of the east. And there's going to be a war that takes place here. When all the armies arrive, the Antichrist is going to set up camp between the seas and the beautiful holy mountain, Daniel 1135. And he's going to, by, by this time, the Antichrist is going to rule the entire globe. And the world is going to ask itself, who can come against him? He is going to be so powerful, so just every in every way strong you got to realize the power he's going to have the world is going to see god unlocking seals angels preaching the two witnesses raising from the dead the 144,000 jewish evangelists and the world is going to look at the antichrist after all the stuff god does and the world's going to say in revelation 13 14 4 13 4 who can fight against the antichrist so this is how powerful he's going to be globally he's gonna be enormously powerful so um no it makes no sense 
Think about this, for all the armies to gather and fight each other because they know they're going to lose to the Antichrist. So instead, they join together to battle against the Lord, against Jesus. That's Revelation 17, 14. Now look what it says in Revelation 16, 14. These miracle working demons call, caused all the rulers of the world to gather for battle against the Lord on that great judgment day of God Almighty. So there's going to be a great judgment day of the Lord Almighty where the miracle working demons who caused the rulers of the world to gather. So it's going to be a demonic strategy. And there's somehow the Antichrist is going to convince the world, all the armies, all the kings, all the rulers, all the 10 kingdoms, which will now be at seven at this time because he's going to rule three of them. He's going to convince everybody, let's fight against the Lord. Revelation 19, 19. Then I saw the beast gathering the kings of the world and their armies in order to fight against the one sitting on the horse and his army. So now the Antichrist, John says, is gathering his army. But he says, I see another army and there's a man sitting on a horse and his army. And there's going to be a battle. It's going to take place at Armageddon. That's why many people call it the battle of Armageddon. They're preparing for war. But again, the armies are not preparing to fight each other. This is going to be a global war against Jesus, the one that sits on the white horse. Okay? This is Jesus sitting on the white horse. What do these armies hope to achieve? Remember, power. The Antichrist gets his power from Satan. Many people believe, and this is what I believe, that Satan is going to indwell the Antichrist just like he did Judas in Luke 23, 3. And if Satan controls the Antichrist, we know what Satan's motive is because we just talked about it three weeks ago. His motive is to get the world to worship him. And we know his motive, according to Isaiah 14, the devil's motive is to ascend to heaven and to set his throne above God's stars, to climb to the highest of heavens and to be like the most high God. Think about this. Isaiah 14, 13, the devil's goal is to ascend to the heavens above the throne of God, to climb to the highest part of heaven and to be like the most high God. Thousands of years have passed. We're in the tribulation. Satan infills the Antichrist. And what is Satan's goal in overcoming the Antichrist? What is Satan's goal? I'm sorry. What is Satan's goal in filling the Antichrist and then fighting the Lord, the one that sits on the white horse? His goal is if I can overthrow the rider of the white horse and defeat God once and for all, because remember in Revelation 12, the dragon got hurled down to earth because Michael and the angels fought him. This is another time where Satan's going to go directly against God. Then what could happen if I could defeat the rider of the white horse? I could take his throne. I could take Jesus's throne and ascend above God if I can defeat Jesus. How am I going to defeat Jesus? I'm going to gather every political power, every ruler, every tank, every nuclear weapon. The armies will gather at Armageddon to take on the Lord. And I laugh when I say this because how many people know the devil underestimated Jesus on the cross and he's underestimating Jesus once again because if the Antichrist and Satan think that they're going to overthrow Jesus, they have another thing coming because the Bible says that his mere breath is going to defeat him. Think about this. The Antichrist... The Antichrist gathers all of the world. And here's what 2 Thessalonians 2 7 says. Oh, I'm sorry, not 2 Thessalonians 2 7. Here's where 2 Thessalonians 2 8 says the Lord Jesus is going to slay him with the breath of his mouth and destroy him by the splendor of his coming. Think about that. The Antichrist <laughs> gathers all of the armies, and Jesus goes, <sighs> You're pathetic. And the breath of his mouth defeats the antichrist and all the armies now the bible says out of the breath of god's nostrils the red sea was opened so moses is like what are we going to do the the ocean we can't cross and god goes hmm and god breathes out of his nostrils and the bible says by the breath of his nostrils the red sea was opened up so you got to understand how powerful your god is now think about this the rulers of the world and the antichrist gather to defeat jesus jesus breathes and defeat them and y'all are sitting here going I don't think God can restore my marriage. I don't think God can save me tonight. I don't think God can restore me tonight. I don't think God can heal me of cancer. I don't think God can wash me. And God says, I breathe and the armies of the world and the Antichrist are defeated. You better believe that Jesus has power to overcome whatever you are going through, okay? Revelation 17, 14. I'm sorry, I just get fired up when I look at how the devil just always flexing. He's always losing. The armies of the world gather to wage war against Jesus. 
Um, the Bible says in Revelation 19, 19, then I saw the beast gathering the kings of the world to fight against the one that sits on the white horse and the world armies gather and you have to understand they're planning to attack. Now, here's the question I've asked. Why does the world want to defeat Jesus, okay? Because we already know why does the Antichrist want to defeat him? Because he wants to be worshiped. He wants to ascend above the heavens because Satan wants to, to win. But what, how does the Antichrist convince the world to fight against God? Why, what does the world have to gain in defeating God? Now, the Bible doesn't tell us explicitly, but I believe it's the same reason why the world fights against him today. Because people want to do their own thing. They don't want God in their way. And the world thinks this, if we can defeat God once and for all, then we can do whatever we want. There's no moral restraint. We can do whatever we want to do. Because remember, the Bible says the whole world loves darkness and hates the light. Another reason why is because Jesus Christ is the source of the tribulation judgments. So number one, they say, we want to defeat him because we don't want him to rule over us. So the one that rides on the white horse, we're going to gather with the Antichrist at Armageddon to overthrow the one on the white horse. And by default, our reward is we don't have to live with a standard. Now, some of you are in this broadcast and you're living the same way. You don't want to have to live the standard that Jesus has written. So you fight against God and you say, how could the Antichrist want to fight Jesus? How could the world want to fight Jesus? Why do you fight Jesus? Why are you always resisting? Why are you always fighting? Why is it every time God begins to move in your life, you resist the move of God? Every time God wants to move in your church, pastor, you resist the move of God. Every time God wants to use you to do miracles and deliverances, you fight against God. Every time the voice tells you to get into prayer, the voice tells you to get in the word, the voice tells you to get serious about God, you resist God. And so don't get all confused saying, why would the Antichrist want to fight God in the world? They want to do it so that they can live for themselves and they're trying to get payback on the seven years of wrath, the seven years of destruction. And because God was the one that caused the judgment, and so they're going to hate him. Now, remember, when the two witnesses die, the Bible says there will be a holiday celebrating their death. People will give each other gifts. Think about that. Because they hated the two witnesses so much. How much more do you think they're going to hate the God of the witnesses? How much more do you think they're going to hate the God of the witnesses? If you are a believer in the tribulation, you are going to be hated like the world has never seen before because the hatred that the people are going to have to God, they're going to turn towards you. Now, the reason why we're hated even to this day, why we're bigots, why people say, you know, you're a bigot, you're this, you're that, is because the world hates God. And the only way they can take their hate out on God is by taking it out on the people that represent God. So don't be confused, like, why do my unsaved friends hate me now? Because they hate God. The spirit of the Antichrist is working even now. They hate the God on the inside of you. So they're mean to you because they're trying to take out their hatred towards God because the spirit on the inside of them is anti the spirit on the inside of you. So they take out their anger and their frustration on you because they want to destroy the image of God in you. This is going to be times a thousand during the Antichrist. This is going to be hatred like never before. But thank God that the Lord is going to defeat the Antichrist. Come on, can I get an amen in the chat? That there will be a gospel explosion, miracles, signs, and wonders like the world has never seen before. And the true believers are going to rise up because Jesus is going to defeat the enemy once again. The devil is going to be defeated. He's going to be chained up for a thousand years. And there's going to be a thousand year reign, which maybe we'll talk about next week and some other things, because I can't break all this down in one week. I went an hour and 10 minutes. I still have a lot more to say, but understand he's going to chain up the devil for a thousand years after defeating him. And then he's going to release him once again to come back and to tempt the world and we will reign on the earth in the great in the millennial reign the thousand year reign with christ on the earth before the new jerusalem and before the new earth comes there's going to be a thousand year reign and what better time what better time for us tonight to take communion to remember that christ has delivered the children of israel has delivered us at the cross oh come on holy ghost i feel the fire and god is going to deliver us once again so this is a great segue into communion we're going to do communion tonight. And if you're wondering, you're new. I know a lot of you, if you're new, if you've never done communion, I want you to go ahead right now and just type one in the chat. Let me put the chat on screen here. If you've never done communion, I want you to type one in the chat. Communion is a symbolic way, basically just to show 
the world and to show people that we belong to Jesus. This is us showing we belong, we're a part of Jesus, and it's a great reminder because we live in a world that is so forgetful. Look at all these ones, guys. It's freezing my thing, so many ones. So many people getting saved, never done communion. Okay, so let me explain this. This is a reminder of what a reminder to us of what Jesus did on the cross because we are so forgetful. This is a great way for us to continue to remind ourselves, okay? The breaking and the eating of the bread has to do with Christ's body being broken on the cross. The drinking from the cup has to do with Christ's um, blood shed on the cross. So that is why I have, if you're new, I know, look at there's so many ones, guys, literally hundreds of ones. I have a cracker here that represents the body. So you can just grab, and my autofocus is gonna let me, you can just grab a cracker or you could grab a piece of bread. I have some grape juice here. Whatever juice that you can have, whatever you can find, you can use. If you don't have juice, it is okay to use water. It's symbolic. You're not gonna, it's not gonna not count if you use water, okay? If you need to, this is all symbolic. But again, it's, I, I use grape juice, but you can use whatever you have available. This is a symbolic way of the shedding blood and reminding what Jesus did on the cross. Now, communion was originally celebrated by God's people as the promise of his protection during the Passover and Exodus 12. But when Jesus came, he redefined the, Passover, the celebration of the Passover. And the Bible says him and his disciples sat in Luke 22:19. 19. The Bible says he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, the Bible says he took the cup saying, this is my new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So in Luke 22, 19, Jesus is redefining Passover. He's redefining communion and he's showing the disciples, this is the new way we're going to take communion. Now, something that is very important for us to do, I apologize, my voice is gone. When it comes to taking communion is to examine ourselves. Many people don't do this. You need to examine yourself because 1 Corinthians eleven twenty seven 27 says, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty against sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. And this is what, the, what Paul says. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who dr eats or drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. So very simply, don't take it lightly. This is what Paul is saying. He's not saying if there's sin, if you're unperfect and you can't. This is what Paul is saying. Do not take it lightly. Examine your motives. Examine yourself. I would challenge you if there's any unrepentant sin, this is a great time to repent. A great time to say, Lord, I repent. I want you to examine me. But basically what Paul is saying is don't take it lightly. Don't take it like a joke. Don't think it's no big deal. Don't just eat it like it's a snack. Paul says you need to examine yourself, okay? So let's say a quick prayer. I like to do this before communion of repentance and just ask the Lord to examine us, ask the Lord to wash us, ask the Lord to renew us. Father, we just pray right now in Jesus' name that you would wash us with your blood, that you would restore us, God, that we would right now, we would examine ourselves in Jesus' name. God, if there's any area of our life that we don't have together, Father, search our heart. If there's any unrepented sin, Father, we pray, search our heart. Tonight, God, we take it serious. We know what you did on the cross was serious and we don't take it lightly. And Father, we just pray right now in Jesus' name that there would be an examination process and that we would honor you, that we would respect you and that this would be a time of reverence, God. That we reverence you tonight, God. We reverence you, your spirit, your power and what you did on the cross, okay? So right now we're examining. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have your bread. So everyone grab their bread now. I know people are saying, wait, I'll give you like 10 more seconds here. Again, I just have a cracker. If you can see, I just have a cracker. If you have bread, I know some of you are saying I'm running to my kitchen to get bread or to get a cracker or to get something, um, rich cracker, anything. You just need to get something as a, as a symbolism, okay? So we're gonna take our bread first. For all of you new people, I know there's several hundred of you that have never taken communion. This is a beautiful thing. Take our bread and we're not gonna eat it yet, but here we go. I wanna read you, I wanna read you 1 Corinthians 11, 23. For I, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me, okay? So we're gonna take this, and this is gonna be in remembrance to what Jesus did, his body was broken, and you can now eat the bread. Okay, so that was the body. Now that we've taken the bread, again, we're not taking this lightly. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-five. 25. In the same way, okay, we're gonna take our cup. Everyone grab their cup. 
He took the cup also after the supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So now this represents the blood of Jesus, the blood that was shed, that was poured out, that was to forgive us of our sin. The same way they put the blood over the doorpost and the Passover, this is now the blood where death has no sting, hell has no power. We can now drink our blood in remembrance of him. I said drink our blood, I meant drink our juice, but it is representative of the blood. Okay, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I wanna say that again. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, so as often as you do it, as often as you want, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So what we just did is we re- proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. Let's just pray a prayer. I like to end with a prayer of thanksgiving. Father, we thank you for what you did on the cross. Lord, if it wasn't for what you did on the cross, we would not be able to stand here justified to boldly come before your throne of grace. So Father, right now, we thank you. God, I just wanna personally thank you for delivering me. I wanna thank you for saving me. I wanna thank you for giving me a family. I wanna thank you for giving me a wife. I wanna thank you for giving me beautiful, healthy children. God, I wanna thank you for my salvation. Lord, that you didn't have to encounter me. You didn't have to deliver me and you didn't have to save me, but I'm so grateful, Lord, that you did. And God, I recognize that it was by the shed blood of Jesus. Come on, in your own words, thank him for whatever he's done for you. It was by the shed blood of Jesus that I'm able now, according to your word, to come before the throne of grace with boldness. God, we thank you, the price that you paid. Father, we thank you that you sent your only son. We just thank you, Jesus, for what you did. We don't take it lightly. And Father, I pray that there would not be a day that goes by where I don't recognize the price you paid on the cross. Lord, we are not ignorant of what you did on the cross. Lord, we don't take it lightly, but we enter your gates. We enter your courts with thanksgiving and praise. And we thank you, Jesus. Come on, everybody in the chat. We thank you, Jesus, for what you did on the cross, that death has lost its power and it's lost its sting sting in Jesus name. We do this in remembrance of you and we thank you, Lord. And Father, I pray tonight that you would just bring healing to those, that you would just bring deliverance to those, that you would just bring breakthrough to those that are sick in body, to those that need deliverance, to those that are oppressed or possessed or demonized or whatever they wanna say. I pray, Lord, that you would deliver them from the enemy. God, we thank you that we are your church, that we are, if you need to get saved, tonight's your night, y'all. We're preaching on the rapture, on the tribulation, tonight's your night. Father, we thank you that we will be taken up with you. We thank you, God, that we will be safe with you. And Father, I pray for those that don't know you, for those that aren't serving you, I pray that you would draw them to repentance. In Acts 2.38, they said, Peter, what must we do to be saved? Peter said, you must repent, be baptized, and receive the Holy Spirit. So Father, right now, we just repent of our sins, Lord. We pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that you would baptize us in fire. Your word says that one, John the Baptist said, one coming is coming greater, that baptizes in a greater baptism, and that's the Holy Spirit in fire. So Father, I pray over every person watching, every person in the chat, every person watching on the replay, that you would baptize them in the Holy Spirit and fire, that we would burn for you, God, that we would know you, God, like never before. So Holy Spirit, we say, do what only you can do. Holy Spirit, have your way. We just pray right now, Jesus, heal bodies, deliver people, restore marriages, break mental strongholds, stir up your fire. And I'm just I'm just seeing right now in the spirit, houses on fire. I pray, Lord, that houses would get lit on fire in the spirit. Houses would get lit on fire in the spirit. God, light our houses on fire in Jesus' name. Come on, pray that right now, Lord. Light my house on fire in Jesus' name. Father, we just pray right now that you would do what only you can do in Jesus' name. You would do, those that just got woken up, God has opened up your eyes. I wanna say this over you, that you will not go to sleep in Jesus' name. You will not lose your fire. You will not lose your passion. But I say over you that you will burn until you either pass away and go to be with the Lord or the Lord returns for his church. That you will not go back to drugs. You will not go back to alcohol. You will not go back to the gang, to the relationship, to the pornography. You'll not go back to the needle. You'll not go back to the pipe. You'll not go back to that toxic relationship. The Lord has brought you out. And I speak over you in Jesus' name that you will stay out of the darkness, that you are now a child of the light, that the Bible says you've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son. You are now a part of the kingdom of God. And so Lord, we thank you 
Guys, it was the blood that gave us entrance into the family. It was the blood that gave us entrance into freedom, into deliverance. And so, Father, thank you for the blood and thank you for your body that was broken, the price you paid. We continue to remember it. Lord, we know that it'll be more than 2.3 billion, that we will share the gospel, we will preach your word. Guys, I wanna say you are a part of an end time army. You are part of something that God is doing in the earth. This is not a light thing. This is not a calm thing. God is doing something in you right now, that God is drafting you for these last days, that we're not playing baby church, that God is enlisting an army, a remnant that is trained up, that is not gonna be ignorant to the devil's devices that is not going to be ignorant of the Antichrist, is not going to be ignorant to the tribulation. God is raising up a strong army, a serious army that is going to overthrow the kingdom of darkness. You've been anointed. You've, you've come too far. I came to tell somebody prophetically that you've come too far to throw in the towel. You've come too far to give up, that this is your moment, that this is your time, that God says it's time to get your sniper rifle. It's time to get your sword, and it's time to overthrow the kingdoms of darkness. God has raised you up. No more ordinary Christianity. No more stale, dull, dead, dry religion. This is the defining moment right now of the church. This is your time in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm telling you guys, God is moving. God is doing something in the earth right now. The power of God is moving like never before. And I believe that God wants to do a new thing. I'm telling you, this is the new thing God is doing. Tonight has been amazing. I didn't expect to go an hour and a half on the end times. I got a lot more stuff I want to cover, guys. I know you guys are like, you talk fast. Listen, guys, here's the thing you got to remember. If I didn't talk fast, it would have took me five hours to get through that. It would have took me uh, three months, okay? We're on accelerated. You're on the accelerated learning program, okay? Alexander Pagani, I love you, bro. You're on the accelerated boot camp Navy SEALs. Now, there was one person in the chat earlier. I don't take it personal, by the way. I thought it was funny. He's like, I'll just get to the point already, right? Like 15 minutes in. This, this, my brother, I don't know who you are that said that. This is not for you, just so you know, okay? You're looking for just a normal average boot camp. You can go find that on any corner. We are doing special Navy SEALs training. People are like, why are you live two hours? Because we're training up Navy SEALs. Navy SEAL training is 30 months for one deployment sometimes, or yeah, 30 months sometimes for one deployment. So we're not training up, our 30, I'm sorry, is it 30 weeks, 30 months? I don't remember, but it's a long time. It's over a year, okay? It's over a year that they train for one deployment. So we're not doing baby. We're not training to swim in the kiddie pool. We're not trying to teach you how to swim with your floaties on. We're training up Navy SEALs. That's why we're doing six to eight hours a week because we're, we, don't, we don't have time, y'all. We're living in the last days. I don't have eight months to teach you how to cast out a demon or the end times or how to pray. I got to do, we're doing accelerated, okay? So some of you, you've only been saved a month and your family that's been in church their whole life is like, how do you know all that? How are you? Because you're in accelerated Navy SEAL training. So if you're one of those that's like, oh, just get to the point, it's too long. Okay, we have eight minute videos for you, all right? We have five minute videos for you. You can go watch some of our eight minute versions, our 15 minute versions, or you can just go watch some watered down preacher. There's a, mil a million of them. There are a dime a dozen. There's a million of them, guys. So we're here to get some intense training, all right? Again, if you are blessed tonight, guys, so into the ministry, so into the broadcast, don't dine and dash, become a monthly partner. You already know we're not gonna take up a 30 minute offering. The links to give are in the description. If it's your first time, they're in the description and they're in the comments. Here's what we do if you're new. I still have my purple border up. All right, let me change this all on. Here's what we're gonna do, guys. We're gonna read the description. I'm sorry, we're gonna read the donations and then we're going to hang out with the chat. So if you need and you're looking for the place to give, the place to do that, they're all there. You can find them right there. All the links are there. All the descriptions are there. All the things are pinned for my giving. You're like, where do I give? You give on the website, you can give on Venmo, you can give on PayPal, you can give on Zelle. Everything is there to give. So it's it's very, very easy to give. We're, we're making it as easy as we possibly can. And then I'm going to read it. And we don't take it lightly. I want to say, don't think like, oh, it doesn't really matter. It does matter. We couldn't do this without you guys. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. We upload every single day at six o'clock. If you don't know, we're not done. We're still going to hang out. Let's see. And you need to like the video. 1,700 likes and 2,300 on YouTube right now. 2,350. So do me a huge favor. Like the broadcast. It helps us tremendously. I believe there's going to come a time, guys, where we hit 10,000 live. Can we get a 10K in the chat? 10,000 live. I believe we're going to hit that. Last Monday, we hit 5,272. So we had over 5,000. And honestly, last Monday when I saw 5,000, in my mind, I was like, okay, it's definitely possible to hit 10,000. So we're going to, guys, someday we're going to hit it. I believe it. We're going to keep plowing, keep preaching, keep posting, keep uploading it. Our 100,000 subscriber plaque is being made right now, which I'll do like an unboxing video, a thank you video to all you guys that have subscribed. But I'm like, 
We got to go for the million. We got to go for the million. Why? Because we want more people saved. We want more people in the kingdom. We want more people to hear the gospel. It's not about income. It's about outcome. And statistically, I think 2% of people give, if I'm not mistaken, when I broke down the numbers. But again, it's, it's a blessing. It's a major blessing. We don't have to charge. We don't have to do teachings to charge you guys. We can do it free because you guys are so generous. And I want you also to know, those of you that are, could afford to give that are giving please don't give me your last 20 dollars. if you cannot afford to give don't give but all of you that are affording to give and you're able to sow just know that you sowing gives other people that can't give the ability to hear the message without us having to charge because if i wasn't having an income coming in through you guys willfully giving i would have to charge because how many people know telling my landlord i had 5,000 people in my broadcast doesn't pay my rent come on can i get an amen in the chat telling my pg e that does my electric bill of my house that i have 5,000 people in my live stream that doesn't matter they'll laugh at me okay so there is a workman is worthy of his hire the bible says if you sow financially sparingly you will reap financially sparingly so amen my mailing address is in the description guys if you want to write me a letter or send something people want to send t-shirts so that i'll wear them on the broadcast i wear small and i'm long sleeve okay so y'all sending me short sleeves i don't wear short sleeves on the broadcast i know someone's like i sent you shirts you never wear them on the broadcast i only wear long sleeves on the broadcast but yeah my p.o box is there in the description if you want to send a check or you want to send a shirt or you want to send me some cheese it's <laughs> you can do that in the P.O. box. All right, guys. If you want to send me a Wingstop gift card, you can do that in the P.O. box. All right. Praise the Lord. We're going to start reading the donations here. And then I'll hang out with the chat and I'll make you guys laugh and I'll, I'll read and do that and chill because you guys are awesome. Okay. I heard some music while you're praying. I could have sworn. Yeah, there was music going during the communion. I have light instrumental playing there. You guys want me to keep the purple. Everyone's like, keep the purple, purple background, you mean? Or the purple border, purple background. All right. That's fine. You guys ask and you shall receive, okay? I'm, I can't say no to y'all. You guys are just too cool. Cheez-Its, what flavor? Oh, the snapped. Oh, you weren't here when we were talking about it? The snapped Cheez-Its. Yeah, I went on a whole like 10-minute sermon on why the Cheez-Its snapped are the best chips that ever were ever created. But yeah, I'm not sponsored by Cheez-It, although I'll be willing to. Wingstop or Cheez-It if you're out there. I'm accepting partnerships. If you want to sow into the ministry, you can. Okay, we're going to read these. I love these two-hour Pentecostal videos. Thank you, Jessica. I'm, I'm glad you do. I'm glad you do like them. I appreciate you. And listen, if we went, if we dropped off to like 100 people, I, I wouldn't be going two hours, believe me. But the fact is that people are willing to stay on, and we have again, we're accelerated, teaching accelerated. Um, we don't have we don't have five years to train you guys. We're like the Lord is getting ready to come back. We're living in the last days. The rapture could happen at any moment. We need to train soldiers. We need to accelerated, all in warriors for God. Eat, breathe, and sleep, God. That's the type of warriors we're raising up. And if you're not that, then we love you. We appreciate you. But there's other communities you can be a part of where they'll give you a five-minute sermon. So praise the Lord for you. But maybe just this is not the place for you because we're, we're pretty radical here. Praise the Lord. If you're not, we love you still. All right. For all of you that are here for 15 minutes, we still love you. We still care about you. Sarah Lynn Firefly. So God is seriously using you to change so many lives, Pastor. Thank you again for your sacrifice and that of your families. We continue to lift you up all in prayer. Thank you, Sarah Lynn Firefly. Anonymous, all of you anonymous, thank you. If you're sending in prayer requests on the donations, I will pray for them after, but I will not read them out loud, okay? I see another prayer request from Rose, Victoria, James, and Josh. Thank you so much. Again, guys, I apologize. My voice is gone. Thank you so much, Rose. Dakota. Um, it's be a deliverance. Uh, Dakota has a prayer, uh, a praise report. He had a prayer request about a home, and God answered his prayer. Praise the Lord. He said, thank you, Jesus. Dakota, that is awesome, bro. Thank you so much for giving, man. Jorge Ortiz, thank you. Anonymous said, praise God for these Holy Spirit-filled messages. Thank you, Jesus. May God bless you, Isaiah, family and ministry. Thank you, Anonymous. Michelle Faulkner said, God bless, mighty man of God. Thank you, Michelle. Emilio Palacios said, straight fire. Praise the Lord. Going to need to go over this video again. I know, guys, I gave over 50 verses. Again, I had to paraphrase them because if I read every one of them word for word, it would have been a three-hour video. Mary, thank you so much, said blessings. Relis says, so thankful to be able to tune in yet to another powerful preaching, praying for you and your family. Thank you so much, Relis. Nazareth, I got your private uh, request. Thank you so much, Nazareth, I got you. Cody Jasper, thank you. Mindy, thank you. Alvia Silvera, thank you. Say, may God continue to use you for his glory. God bless your ministry, thank you. Thank you so much, Alvia. Sue Rhodes said, love Jesus, love the message. Thank you, Sue Rhodes, appreciate you. Pablo Felix said, thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit is moving. I feel it so strong tonight. I do too, Pablo, thank you. Andrea Pratt, thank you so much. Teresa Pacheco 
So thank you, and I pray uh, I pray for you being such an amazing vessel of our Lord, our new John the Baptist. Thank you, Teresa Pacheco. I appreciate you. Kimberly L. Williams, thank you so much. Andrea Dugan said, thank you for your ministry. All praise and glory to God. Thank you, Andrea. Tiffany Vaughn, thank you. Isaac Thomas, thank you. Cheyenne Rivera said, thank you for your prayers. God bless you. You're a true man of God. Thank you for your weekly, daily sermons. And thank you for snaps. They're addicting. Awesome, Cheyenne. Thank you. So, or Cheyenne. I'm glad you're enjoying the Cheez-Its and I'm glad that you're part of the community. We appreciate you and you are awesome. Okay. I'm surprised no one has donated sing purple lights. I'm sure someone will here soon. Let me keep reading. Isaac Ramirez, thank you. Jalen said, so grateful for these lives and everything God is doing through you. God bless you and yours. Thank you, Jalen. Anonymous, I got your prayer request. April Price said, thank you for another great message. Thank you so much. Jeremy Barmore, thank you, bro. Maisie Martinez, thank you. Maurice Washington saying, praying praying for holy ghost fire on every stream thank you maurice irene or is it irene nolasco thank you so much anonymous said blessings brother thank you anonymous gail mcvary said great message communion was special thank you gail i agree communion was very very special thank you so much ryan s we're gonna do it at least once a month guys ryan s say god bless you bro thank you ryan lovely lomax said oh i lost it here okay i thank god for you i already see the fruit from the seeds you've planted in my family thank you lovely ingrid said thank you for your teaching thank you ingrid i'm praying for you mary um diesh said incredible me incredible message blessings thank you mary lorraine m thank you so much tyreek simpson someone said i can't afford not to give i felt that come on somebody laugh out loud god bless you love y'all tyreek simpson thank you so much bro we appreciate you and love you you're awesome thank you thank you thank you all right, you're getting banned. Whoever's typing in that WhatsApp scam thing. Boom, you just got banned. Welcome to the ban hammer. All right, guys, don't type in scams. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Alva, say, agree with me in prayer for restoration of my marriage and complete. Okay, I got you, Alva. Thank you so much. Let's see. Tyin Aina said, I really haven't been faithful with tithing and I don't have a church. I attend right now, but I feel a part of this ministry. So hopefully this is the first of many donations to the Lord. Thank you, Ty, um, Tyan. Tyan? Tian, thank you so much. I'm, I hope I said that right. Yeah, someone just got smacked back into 1991. T-Dog says, is it cool or um, stupid to get Bible verses tattooed in your opinion? I personally do not recommend getting tattoos. I don't have any tattoos and the Holy Spirit will not let me get tattoos because he convicts me whenever I even think about it. So I'm not going to recommend you getting tattoos, but you have to make your own decision and walk by your own convictions again, but I'm not going to be, especially because there's a lot of young people on here, I would never never start telling my audience to get tattoos i saw a very popular pastor telling people to get tattoos and i was like not a good look all right anyways no judgment if you have tattoos i'm just telling you i'm not going to start telling people to get tattoos glenda p thank you so much olivia says thank you so much for availing yourself god bless you and your obedience thank you olivia jessica watson said thank you so much for lighting up my fire for jesus i've been praying for god asking him for something more but i don't know what i was looking for and god pointed me to your tiktok page thank you so much big god bless you jessica watson from tiktok thank you i love when people say that they're watching from tiktok because tiktok is so weird with the algorithm and i only post like maybe once every couple days so jessica thank you i'm trying to be more active on tiktok in fact let's look at the tiktok here i just posted three of the tribulation videos one of them is getting actually a lot of views. It got 30,000 views today. But there's our TikTok. We are still alive and well on TikTok. We're at 228,000 uh, followers there. And we just started posting some of the tribulation parts there. I have some David Wilkerson, some deliverance videos. So yeah, we are on TikTok. I'm glad you came, Jessica, and I'm glad you're part of the family. Anonymous. So to asking, I got your prayer request, Anonymous, for your body. Emily Salas. So thank you so much. God bless you and your family. Thank you, Emily. Uh, Anonymous said, thanks, Abba, for you just got delivered from spirit of cult, generational curse, witchcraft, as I as I was initiated as a Sangoma in South Africa and moved to Canada. Pray with me. I pray, I pray for the work permit in Canada. Awesome. You just got delivered, Anonymous. I'm so glad. Praise the Lord. Ryan said, I'm on a journey right now with Jesus, but my sister, um, I don't feel, try to deliver her. Ryan, maybe check out the deliverance map if you're newly saved and you want to try to get your sister help maybe try to get her deliverance on the deliverance map but i also don't want to read out her business out loud thank you ryan antonio 
said you're doing God's work. Thank you, Antonio. Tanya Horton said great message. Thank you, Tanya. Michelle Ivy said thank you for educating us. Did you buy any crypto yet? So I do have crypto. I haven't bought any recently, but I have crypto from years ago. My father-in-law, who's very into crypto, actually started me, my wife, and even our kids crypto accounts. So I have a lot of crypto from 2017, I think. And then I got some last year as well, but I haven't bought in any recent because my wife and I are trying to buy a house. We've been renting forever. Uh, I was gonna say we've been renting for the last five years, but we've been renting forever. We've never owned a house. So we're trying to work on saving to buy a house. So in Jesus name, Cindy Jacobs prophesied over me that God was taking to take care of a house and provide a house and all that. So we're just saving our money and we're praying and we're believing God for a the right house to come up on the market. So that's where we're at. We're praying about getting a house and waiting on the right house to pop up. So I'm not spending any money on crypto or anything like that, but yeah. Crypto is cool. Everyone's saying XRP, XLM. Yeah, I'm a crypto nerd. I know all about all of them. XRP, Ripple, XLM, Stellar Lumens, all that. I'm, you guys already know I'm a nerd. Anything that has to do with nerd, you already know I'm into, okay? Richard Alfonso. God bless you, Isaiah, and your family. Unmatchable name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much, Richard Alfonso. Peter Torres, thank you so much. Yeah, and if any, listen, I'm just going to say something here. If any of you are out there and you want to buy us a home, I have never said that, but I'm throwing it out right there right there is out there if you're just like oh i have an extra million dollars i have an extra five hundred thousand i have an extra two hundred thousand i want to buy you a house i've had several pastor friends get someone buy them a house cindy jacob said that god's already taking take care of the house and that was four years ago so i'm holding on to the word so if any of you millionaires out there i know there's some millionaires in the broadcast let the lord use you <laughs> all right i'm joking but not really iris burks thank you so much richard alfonso thank you valerie vigil thank you so much Isaiah Mitchell, thank you. Said powerful message tonight, straight fire. Thank you, Isaiah Mitchell. Joseph G two G two G said, I thank God that the Holy Spirit moves in you. Speak in time, uh, speak in times with. It's truly been a blessing. I'm filling the fire from the Holy Spirit. God bless you and your family. Get some cheese, it's bro. They are fire. Thank you, Joseph. I appreciate you. Thank you. Someone said false teacher. Oh, okay, if asking if someone to buy my house is false teacher, then praise the Lord for that. All right, let's read the Venmo. Or maybe you're just mad that I'm reading donations. Who knows? All right, let's read the Venmo here. Mm -mm -mm. All of you that are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you want someone to buy you a house. Don't listen. You can't afford to buy me one if you're angry about it. So just just ignore what I said anyways. Someone said I'll buy your house in South Texas, right? I live in California and all my family's here. So yeah, that's rough. If the Lord told me to move, then yeah, but I have all my family here and we're very, very, our family is very important to us. Someone said they'll buy me a house. I'm joking, but not really. Okay, praise the Lord. Let me know. All right. I don't have Cash App. Unfortunately, I do have Zelle, Venmo, and PayPal. And my website you can give. Shall I hammer? Uh, yeah, if you want to. I don't mind. You can mute them. Anonymous, thank you. If they think spamming false teacher is going to like do anything, then yeah, go ahead and mute them. All right. Did you, thanks for asking for permission, Nate, before you ban them. You're like, I told, you said to be nice tonight. All right. PayPal's easy. Z is in Texas, right? There's my Zell. Thank you, bro, for putting that. I shall supply all your needs according to rich and glory. Yeah, we're believing God for it. We know it's all in God's timing. God's going to make a way. The Zell name is Isaiah Luke Saldivar at yahoo.com. Kayleen Cruz said, blessings. I got your prayer request. Esteban Garcia, I got your prayer request. Michelle Ivy said house funds. Thank you, Michelle Ivy. I appreciate you. Thank you for that. You're awesome. All right. <laughs> Someone said hammer. Ignore them, Isaiah. It's guys, listen. God has so built me for live streaming. Not only can I read super fast and I could keep up with everything. There's like 30 things on my screen right now. Actually, you can't see my screen or else I would show you. But uh, you literally can't offend me. Like I, I, I am so unoffendable beyond unoffendable that no matter what you said to me or what you try to flame me or spam me with or try to attack me with, like, there's no way you could offend me. Like, I sometimes I'm like, maybe I should be offended, but I'm just not. So, yeah, I'm not worried at all. Anything you're like, oh, I hope he doesn't get his feelings hurt. I don't, I'm dead. I'm dead to self. I don't have feelings. So you can't hurt my feelings. You can't offend me. It's all good. I love you. All right. You honestly can't do what I do with, and have and be like that where you're like, you know offended by stuff I, you just can't be that way if you're going to be able to stand in the front lines and jesus says the world's going to hate you because they hated me you have to be able to take on the brunt of the hatred from not just the world but religion and really the world actually loves my stuff it's it's religious people that don't like it Corey d 
I got your prayer request. Thank you so much, Corey D, for that donation. Very generous, bro. Thank you. I got your prayer request there. I'll pray for everything after I get done. I want that trait. Yeah. I'm dead to self, y'all. You cannot offend me. Um, does John Thornton, thank you so much. So thank you for your ministry. I have holy fire back in my life. I received deliverance. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank you, um, Dejana. Lizzie, thank you so much. Lizzie Reagan. Lauren Lawson, I got your prayer request. Um, awesome. I'll be praying for that. I'm glad you came down to the revival, Lauren and your daughters. Tanya Cardwell, say great teaching tonight, Isaiah. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Karis Ibarra, thank you so much. Excuse me, guys. Caroline Mojica said, sowing into the ministry. Jesus is working in my life. Jesus is breaking chains and strongholds. I got your prayer request there. Thank you. Cameron Edwards said, for being obedient and getting me prepared for deliverance ministry. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Please pray for my intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Cameron. Shirley Madrigal said, thank you so much. Your ministry continues teaching me so much. God bless you and your beautiful family. Tithe for 4, 12, and 14. Thank you, Shirley. Kalia Padron said, my boys are eight years old and nine years old and they love watching with me and learning. Thank you for everything you do. Kalia, there's nothing I love more than hearing my eight and nine year old love watching you. So I'm so glad. And I pray Kaylee Padron that your nine, eight and nine year old would serve God all the days that God would guard them and guide them and use them mighty that they are end time warriors in Jesus name. The Padron boys, you guys are legends. Keith Gester said, thank you guys there for all you do. Thank you, Keith. Brianna Barrero, thank you. Yulia um, Shkarina. Oh, I said that so wrong. What do you think of the American Gospel movie? I wouldn't, I haven't watched the whole thing, but I wouldn't recommend watching it because there's a lot of things on there that are not right when it comes to like the gifts and healings and miracles. There's some good stuff, but there's a lot of stuff that could turn like new believers astray and confuse new believers. So that's why I don't recommend it to people. Portia, thank you so much. Laline said, they, not only that, they're making fun of a bunch of people I know personally on there too. So yeah, that's another reason. Thank you, Isaiah. Uh, Laline said, thank you, Isaiah. Pray for my children. Um, to put the same fire you have on them. I will, Laline. Thank you. Brian Schultz said, God bless. Thank you, Brian. Um, Brian. Lexi Colgrove said, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lexi. Ann Haler said, end times, great teaching. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Candy Vallejo said, always a blessing to sow into what God is doing in the ministry. Thank you, Candy Vallejo. You are a legend. Megan Gaffney so thank you for all the blessed uh thank you for all the blessed learning from you in the lord i love your broadcast thank you so much megan nathaniel hills said beyond fire happy mother's day to Alyssa. keep putting in the work for the kingdom much love my brother thank you nate i appreciate you bro i'm net osin so thank you for this the lord for this message isaiah's raising at warriors praying for sons to get ignited thank you annette delar rucker said praise jesus for you your videos are changing my household thank you so much kita hargraves thank you so much Susanna um, Hoffi said, I love your voice of truth. Keep preaching, going through a lot, and I'm growing and encouraged every time I hear your broadcast. God bless you and all who support you. Love the family photos posted a week or so ago. Thank you, Susanna. If you guys want to see more family photos, go follow my wife on Instagram, Alyssa Saldivar, because she posts a lot more family stuff than I do. My brother helps run my Instagram, so usually the only time I get on is to post flyers or preaching videos. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm get I get haircuts a couple days before now, not the day of, so... My hair is a little bit longer than usual, but I know it's super short to a lot of you. You're like, your hair is so short and it's just funny. But Maria Christina said, Isaiah, you changed our entire family with your videos. Um, and I got your prayer requests. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Christina. I'm so glad that God was able to use me to change your family. It's, it's, I can't, guys, I can't comprehend all the testimonies we get of people that are like, God did this through your broadcast, did this because I think God shields me from seeing all that he's doing to keep me from becoming proud or prideful. So it's like, it's hard to understand when someone writes me and says, you changed our entire family with your videos. Like it's hard to grasp the actual change. So yeah, but thank you so much. Um, I'm glad that you've been changed. Kaylee Mc, uh, McIlwin. So they can literally feel the spiritual realm shifting lately. God is moving among his people. Grateful for your ministry and got to try the snap cheese. It's you got to Kaylee. Jessica Ayala said, great servant. Thank you. I'll tell you guys about something else I'm hooked on right now, but you're going to judge me. But anyways, maybe later said great servant. Thank you, Isaiah. Can't wait to see you at Victory Hour San Jose. I'm praying for my children's salvation. All three of them have been to prison. She's okay. Jessica, I can't wait to meet you in San Jose. Cynthia Bird said, thank you so much, Isaiah, for doing communion tonight. I've only had my spinach and feta stuffed bread and my Coke from Domino's, but every single second of my communion. Awesome, Cynthia. I'm glad you did communion with us. Awakening Remnant Church, you're always giving so generously. They said, here's a seed to purchase a new um, GAT. Pew Pew Life. Jimmy and Whitney Canellis. Thank you, Jimmy and Witness. Ah, thank you, Jimmy and Whitney. Awakening Remnant Church for that seed. You guys are always so awesome sowing into the ministry. Really appreciate you, Awakening Remnant Church. Thank you. 
Maria Sanders said, th so thankful for you, Isaiah. God bless you. Alexandra Rojas, wait, am I reading old ones? Said sewing. Thank you, Alexandria. Alicia Hines said, thank you for this fire word. First time listener. Alicia Hines, thank you. First time listener. Guys, she's a first time listener and she's giving. Okay, and some of you have been here for a year and you've never given a dollar. All right, praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I got your prayer request, Cynthia Bird. Thank you so much for that donation. Brooke Albertson said, I recently got saved in February, baptized last Sunday. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Brooke, for that donation. Um, just watch our videos. I have a lot of videos, Brooke, that'll help you be more confident and, and walk in the power of God. Trisha Ben Davis said, thank you, Isaiah. Please do a teaching on how to die to self. I will, Trisha. Josh Frakes said, you didn't get to watch tonight, but I guarantee it was amazing. I'm waiting for uh, stream to end so I can rewatch. Josh Frakes, thank you, bro. Actually, Josh, if you want to watch now, you can. On YouTube, you can just scroll back and watch. You don't have to wait for it to end. On Facebook, you can't rewind, but on YouTube, you can. Neil and Shannon Wall said, God bless you. The fire of God is alive tonight. Thank you for leading us in communion with our Father. May we all be found acceptable in his sight. He must increase, we must dec de decrease. Yes. Frankie Fango um, said, hey, bro, let me know if the monthly support is going through. Got COVID five days ago. Now my mother got it. Please pray. I'm praying for you, bro. If you could email me, Frankie, Frankie, at my personal email that you got when I partnered, I could check it for you because I need your email to check it. Alva Solario said, God bless you with a house, but you have the most important, a home. Thank you, Alva, for that donation. Thank you so much. Hilton said create a live.me social media account you could reach 10,000 people at one time thank you Hilton um I use restream to go to YouTube and Facebook I'm not sure I'll check out live.me though but yeah um awesome if I was rich I'd give you a house thank you Jocelyn appreciate it Jesus of the way the life yes he is what's a new people snack okay so it's not a new snack again don't judge me on this guys we're at the end of the broadcast I've already preached you guys my heart out for two hours okay so just realize I'm human I'm a human being and don't judge me the what I'm hooked on right now is not only the Wingstop and the Cheez Its, okay? Again, I'm 130 pounds, so I don't know how I eat the way I eat or anything like that, but I, I rarely eat. That's probably why. But is the my wife bought them for me is the watermelon Mountain Dew. Have you guys had this? Watermelon Mountain Dew. Now, I'm not usually like one that just will drink sodas all the time. And growing up, we only drank water. We literally were not allowed to eat to drink soda in our house. Like we didn't buy it, it was only special occasions. But I'm like, I'm hooked on these, y'all. The watermelon Mountain Dews, if you haven't had those, they're so good. You need to try it out. Again, don't come praying, asking for prayer from like breaking the spirit of addiction because I got you hooked. Drink it at your own discretion. Jen said, preaching fire as always. I got your prayer request, Jen. I'll pray for that. Thank you. Sounds gross. If you don't like watermelon, you're not going to like it. But it's a watermelon Mountain Dew and it's so good. Do you plan on going live on TikTok too or no? I did go live once on TikTok. I think we had like 100 live viewers and it's just kind of annoying because I have to put up my tripod. I can't go live through this broadcast. I have to go live on my phone. So it's just like a lot more work and maybe I'll do it again. Major Melon, that's what's called, Leslie. Yeah, Major Melon, so good. Everyone's like, watermelon's not good. I'm gonna pray for y'all. How many, so many of you are like, that's so gross, ooh, ooh. You guys need some prayer and deliverance, y'all. If you don't like, if you don't like watermelon, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, the watermelon Mountain Dew is so good. Mountain Dew is addictive. May God deliver me me to water again. I know, right? I don't. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's not good for you. Mountain Dew is horrible for your teeth. I know. Okay, see, now you guys are making me feel all bad. All right, I don't drink like five a day. Be nice. I brush my teeth a lot too. Isaiah, you should buy. What does it say? Isaiah, you should buy a cat every day until you get ten thousand alive. What does that mean? What do you mean buy a cat? I rent, so we're not allowed to have animals at the house I rent. I'm out, family. Later, Nate. Thanks, bro, for being here. Love and appreciate you, man. Um, ginger ale is the best. Don't compare that to watermelon. Yummy. Bring back game show. The hails are ready. I need to. I need to. Where's Wait, where's that comment at? Who said that? I just read it and it disappeared. Oh, Roy Hale. I need to bring back the game shows. I have to use a different platform that where everyone can join. What is it called? Like, kazoo? And basically, like, everyone could join in the game, right? So that would be cool to do a uh, Bible like trivia stream because we used to do Bible trivia back in the day. Watermelon is gross. You're gross. What? When is the next monthly monthly partners meeting? This Thursday night. I announced it in the beginning if you weren't here. This Thursday night at 6 o'clock Pacific. I'll post on Wednesday and send out emails. If you don't get by noon, then yeah. You have really white teeth. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Kahoot. Kahoot. That's what it's called. Okay. Do a Kahoot. All right. I have to look into that. Isaiah, are you going to be one of those YouTube live stock analysts? Wait, what? No. YouTube live? No. I don't talk stocks, crypto, none of that on this channel. 
or tech. I'm a nerd. Like, I could literally make a tech channel, but I don't because I want to keep this channel preaching only. Kazoo. Kazoo. Okay. Uh, is it Kazoo or Kahoot? What is it, guys? I don't know what it is. How do you become a partner? IsaiahSaddler.com slash partner. You could give monthly and then you'll be on the list and you'll get invited to the partner's calls. There you go. Shannon said, thank you so much for doing communion. I can't wait to have my children watch this tomorrow. Watch this tomorrow. Fantastic sermon. Many blessings to you. Thank you, Shannon. You guys can always rewatch the communion and do it with your family if you ever need to. Do you watch any sports? I don't, Wilfredo. I've never liked sports. It's not a conviction thing. It's just Dakota caught that when I said you're gross. Kahoot. Is that what it's called? Loved your new vlog. Thank you, Christina. If you guys haven't seen the vlog from Modesto, check it out. Is it Kahoot or Kazoot? Why are you guys confusing me? Thank you, Lonzo. Love you too, man. Oh, it's Kahoot. My kids play it for online school. Okay, cool. Bible trivia, Kahoot would be cool. Do a Kahoot, bro. We used to do Bible trivia at the end of the stream. When are you going coming to the DMV? Well, the DMV where I live is the Department of Motor Vehicles, and hopefully never because it's a long line. But where I don't know where DMV is. Isaiah, you never read my comments. What is your comment? Look how fast my comments are moving. I, I'm trying to read it. Just because I don't read them out loud doesn't mean I'm not reading them. I'm, I'm doing my best, guys. I'm reading, like, we average 20 to 30,000 comments per live stream. 20 to 30,000. So it's, I try to read every comment, guys. Even if I don't read it out loud, doesn't mean I'm not reading it. And if you're asking me some super deep theological question, I'm probably not going to answer it during the chat because I'm trying to talk to chat and I can't spend 30 minutes answering your theological question. DMV is Maryland. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Write a book. I know. I need to. I haven't been on in a week, so I really needed this. I'm glad, Cindy. But whoever said I never read their comment, what was your comment? Just spam it and I'll read it. He read it. He just read it. I know. See, I just read the one you said. Um, I just became a monthly partner. What do I do now? You're going to get an email from me after the stream. I'll send you a personal email thanking you, giving you all the links, and you'll be automatically registered to the email list. If you don't get an email Wednesday because your email server blocked my email for whatever reason, get on Facebook or Instagram and comment on my post that you'll see you didn't get an email and I'll send it to you manually. Okay, I'll, I, I spent hours on Wednesday sending manual emails to everyone that their email server blocked it. Yeah, I did the DMV. I had to renew my license. What size shoes and what size shirt? My size shoe is I think nine, eight and a half or nine. I have small feet and my shirt is small. Size small, men small and my shoes are I think size nine, eight and a half or nine, depending on the brand. Is grave soaking good? No, it's not. Do not grave soak. Do you have any favorite superheroes? Not really. I don't like, I don't watch superhero movies, to be honest. I'm kind of out of touch with superheroes. Please answer, what is the talking beast um, in Revelation? I'm not sure, but I'm going to do a video more on the false prophet and stuff. So maybe that's what you're talking about. Leave him alone. He's doing his best. Thank you. I'm doing my best. What's grave soaking? If you don't know, you don't need to know. It's just when people go to people's graves and try to suck the anointing out. His purpose said God first now and forever. Thank you, his purpose. I'm reading guys yes a book Ooh, grave soaking seriously yeah don't grave soak <laughs> I don't have any church family except here well we're glad that Cindy to be your family we love and appreciate you if you don't know what grave soaking is don't look into it you don't need to know it's just when people go and lay hands on a grave and like ask for the anointing I, I don't watch sports or, or superhero movies I'm not into them grave soaking is a real thing just don't do it yeah just don't do it Mm -mm -mm. Jesus, uh, we ever do a live truth gospel? There's many different things out there. A live on the truth gospel? What do you, wait, what does that mean? Will you ever do a live on truth of the gospel? Since there's so many different things. Like, what is the gospel you mean? I talk about the gospel all the time. The good news. I talked about it like two weeks ago. But I, but you, you want me to do like a whole video? I could do that. Please do a teaching on Jesus ruling the earth for a thousand years. I plan to hopefully next week. God is the only thing that anoints, not a grave, y'all. That's right. Have you watched Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared? No, I haven't. Whatever the person was full of the Holy Ghost, doesn't matter. You could get your anointing straight from the Holy Ghost. You don't have to get it from me or you don't have to get it from a grave. Is Lazarus alive still? No. Can you make a video on the Freemason? Sure. When is the Sid Roth going to brought uh, air? In July. They texted me today saying it won't be uh, airing till July. They do film months ahead of time, guys, unfortunately. But it'll be a little while till it's out. Yeah, they're editing it right now. What church do you know from Chicago? Lighthouse Church for All Nations is the church that I know of in Chicago. Bye, Brooke. Thanks for being here. My roommates do smudging. Should I leave? What's smudging? Isaiah, when are you coming to Chicago? I'm not sure. 
Can people give their anointing? Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not into that. I, I, why would you get your anointing from me if you get it from God? I think you can lay hands and impart spiritual gifts because Paul said, I long to be with you that I might lay hands and impart spiritual gifts. So I think you can lay on hands and, and there, there's an impartation, but I don't think you can give other people your anointing because it's not your anointing. Remember, it's a, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit anoints me. Why would I give you my anointing when he's the one that anointed me? He could anoint you. You don't need to go to me to get my anointing. You could ask him for your own anointing because it's not my anointing. It's the Holy Spirit's anointing. Do you have Cash App? I don't, Anthony. I have Venmo, Zelle, PayPal, website, all those other ways. Oh, smudging is burning sage. Yeah, I wouldn't smudge. It's demonic. What's the best way to battle spiritual attacks? I have a video on spiritual attacks you should check out. Do kids get raptured? I believe they do, Jordana. I don't know the age of accountability. I think every kid is different, but I believe kids do get raptured. Yes. Is spiritual cleansing bad? It depends on what it is. It depends on what you're doing for spiritual cleansing. You could call deliverance spiritual cleansing because spiritually you're getting cleansed, but it depends on what you're doing. You snap. I don't have Snapchat. If that's what you're asking. What is the gospel of the kingdom? It's the whole gospel. It's healing, deliverance, salvation, preaching, lifestyle. It's the, it's the whole thing. It's not just get saved. It's live the life out. Your teaching are so clear, and I love that you cover topics pastors won't teach. I've learned so much. God bless you. Thank you, Carrie or Kari. I appreciate you, Kari Newkirk. Burning sage is demonic, yes. How long do you fast a day? I fast usually the whole day or to the end of a broadcast or to the end when I'm traveling. It just depends on my schedule. Please do a video on progressive Christianity. I'm always going against progressive Christianity, but if you want me to do a direct video, I can. What does ringing in the ears mean? It can mean multiple of things. It could be a health issue. It could be a demonic thing. It could be God speaking to you. You have to, you have to discern it. I can't, it's not, there's not one answer. Group fast. Yeah, we should do that. When are you coming to New Mexico? I'm not sure. You should do a video on what happens to your relatives when they die. I have a video on the judgment day. I have a video on eternity. I have a video on death. I talk a lot about eternity. Yeah, I talked about uh, Burning Sage with Jenny Weaver. Cancellation, what does that mean? Sometimes I'm reading comments to, uh, you guys are writing to each other and I think you're ta talking to me. Progressive Christianity is basically just like Christianity that's like progressive, like it's evolved. We need to accept this and accept this and accept this because God has changed because of the culture. So that's progressive. Many people believe that the age of accountability starts at 12. That could be true, but everyone does a uh, mature different. If I ever become a millionaire, I'll buy you a house. Thank you, Sarah. Living my dream. Thanks to Bitcoin and Miss Oliver. Grateful everyone reading this. Um, okay. Do not promote Forex trading or your thing. Is that a bot? Yeah, it is. I'm blocking you. Get smacked with a band hammer. Why do you guys come up in here with your little bot saying, I learned so much from so-and-so with Bitcoin and stocks. Click here to join our... Come on, dude. No one's got time for that. I want to know if you got my Zelle. I'll check it right after. I don't have access to Zelle immediately. But if it, went, if it says it went through, I'm sure I got it. Emily Lalin, thank you so much. Very true. Not up in here. Yeah, don't... Come on, guys. Don't be coming up here trying to scam people. Bots are weirdos. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ban hammer. Are you going to write a book? Yes. Uh, is trading Forex like gambling? I think it all depends. I learned so much from Isaiah Salivar. Thank you, Jonelle. Yeah, Edgar, I've preached there before. When will the new merch drop? Probably in this month or middle of June. I'm, I'm again, waiting on my designer. He's working on eight designs. So I'll probably drop like four and four or something like that. Or maybe, yeah, I don't know. Something like that. What do you think about NAR? What are you talking about? The New Apostolic Reformation? Uh, everybody has their own definition on NAR. So I couldn't really tell you. Because some of the guys that they say are in NAR are friends of mine that are legit. And I would probably be considered in NAR because I believe in like miracles and gifts and deliverance. So I, I don't know. It's, it's a loose definition. It's hard to say. It's like, what do you think about Baptist? There's like a thousand denominations of Baptist. So it's hard to say. You know what I mean? Your love is contagious. Uh... If you're talking about God, awesome. Or if you're talking about me, awesome too. Thanks, KB. What happens after the thousand years um, God reigns when Satan, can, Satan gets led out to tempt the world once again? After that comes the great white throne judgment. After that, Satan gets chained, thrown in the lake of fire for all of eternity. And then there's a new earth and a new Jerusalem. When is the Antichrist coming to the world stage? Nobody knows. 
You are just in need, Isaiah. Will we fight alongside the Lord during the end times? I think we might. The Bible talks about a heavenly army with the Lord. So I don't know if we're a part of the heavenly army or it's just the angels, but it's 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 likely there could be we could be a part of some type of fight during the thousand year reign. Oh, I'm a nerd. Yeah, I am a nerd. 100%. Flat earth or round? Round. 100%. How much should a teen fast? Uh, I don't know if there's any, a right answer to that. I would start with doing one day fast. I want to burn for God where I start. Start in the book of John. Start in prayer and start doing one day fast. Okay, Roy. I'll look into that. Come to the Southeast. Love you so much, Isaiah. Thank you, Nicole. Love you too. What do you think of washing feet? I think it's biblical. I've washed people's feet before and I've had people wash my feet. But I mean, it's not like a thing I do all the time. I'm not going to go around like washing everyone's feet that come over. But if God tells you to do like to honor somebody, then it could be a powerful thing. I will, we, we need to do a baptism on one of our next services. He reads an answer so quickly. I know I try to. I'm trying to, I try to read every single comment. I read a lot. Like as I'm preaching, I'm literally reading comments. Is it wrong if you go to the army? No, I don't believe so. Apostolic Reformation, I thought that's what Jesus did, right? 100% nerd here. Yes, me too. Do you ever get tired? All the time, yeah. How often do you fast? It all depends, April, on my schedule. But I would say a couple times a week. I don't know. It, dep it all depends on my schedule. Are you reading this? Yes, Cindy Hobbs, I'm reading it. Man, I need a pedicure. I read that, K. Kai. Is the Daniel fast cheating? It's not cheating, but it's not a biblical fast. I have a video on fasting that talks all about it. Chantelli Baca. So we look up to you, Brother Isaiah. I'm doing deliverance and preaching. Thanks to you. I'm not shy. Thank you for letting God use you to help others. A lot of my church family watch you. A bunch of Pentecostal soldiers to fight against the enemy. Awesome! Chantelli. Thank you. She said she watches me, her family, and her friends at church. And now she's bold doing the work. Awesome, Chantelli. Nerd skills, reading while you broadcast. Yeah, reading while I'm broadcasting and while I'm preaching. How can you do Zelle? You can use the Zelle app. Or use your banking app if you, it has Zelle built in like Chase. How do you talk normally off of video? Same way. If I talk about God, y'all, I'm talking like this. But I mean, normally, I don't, I, I talk normal. This is how I talk. But obviously, I don't talk this fast if I don't have to, but I do talk fast in person too. It's funny when people tell me to slow down and I'm already slowed down so much. I'm like, you don't even realize how slow I'm going. Sometimes I feel guilty when I break a fast. Just ask the Lord to forgive you. It's not a big deal. Man, take a breath, breath, brother. Have you heard me preach? I don't breathe for about an hour. Why doesn't Isaiah rap Bible verses? I should. Have you looked back at how far God moved since the pandemic? Like how much God has moved? I thought you had in a fast notion for a bit. No, everyone thinks it's skipping when I'm talking fast. It's just me reading fast. Can gr Christian men grow their hair long? Yes, you can. The context of the verse was for a specific time. I don't think I can understand you if you slow down, right? A church I go to uses a rose for spiritual cleansing. I, I don't know where that's at in scripture. That's weird. Why would they use a rose? Maybe, I don't know. I don't want to judge them though because I don't know the context of how that why they use the rose. It's quantum healing bad. I don't know what it is. How can you discern a Kundalini spirit versus the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit brings glory to Jesus. The Kundalini spirit brings glory to the person. Boom. Boom. Drop the mic. What's on your playlist? Currently, I'm listening to Maverick City, like everybody in the whole country. But I have I have hundreds of, like, I think I have probably over 10,000 songs on my playlist. So it's hard to say one. But right now, I'm listening to Maverick City worship when, when, when I'm listening to worship. The two witnesses are Enoch and Elijah. That's what some people believe. Others believe Enoch are Elijah and Moses. I believe there's a verse that says one of them is Elijah. It says like Elijah will come back during that great time or something. But I don't know where the verse is. You could probably Google it. Lariah Fields. Thank you. I got your prayer request. Thank you so much. All right. We're going to hang out for a bit, guys. And then we're going to jump off. When will Z be back on? I'm not sure yet. But I'll be doing an event with Z in San Jose. Tomorrow, I'll post the events, guys, on my website. Should I anoint my room? Yeah, it's, it wouldn't hurt, Juan. Do you recommend Bible college? It depends. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to hurt you. When will the new merch drop? As soon as I have new designs, hopefully mid-May or June. 1600 still here. I know, it's crazy. You guys are amazing that you guys stay. You guys are incredible. 
What an awesome night. We had great numbers tonight too. What's your favorite Maverick City song? I don't even know. I like I like a lot of them. Right now on the new album, either Wait On You or Talking To Jesus. I like Wait On You a lot. What word does give you at this moment for me? What word does give you? What does that mean? What word does God give you? I don't, I don't have a word for you right now, Karen. Idol worship is against God. Yep. Can you come to Canada? Maybe in the future. What is the music you use in the vlog? It's Eliah Monroe. I have it linked in the description of the vlog. I have his channel linked in the description. I just spelled his name out. Do you ever fall back into sin? Um, I think everybody sins unintentionally, but intentionally sin. I can't think of a time recently where I've intentionally sinned. But of course, everybody like we get angry or get mad or like accidentally tell a lie or whatever else the other thousand sins you can do. But there's a difference between willfully sinning and falling into sin or accidentally sinning. Grace is for if you sin, not when you sin. So. But I mean, if you mean like falling back into sin, like going watching pornography or going in drinking or going in cheating on my wife, then no. I don't do any of those things. Wait on you is good. It is. I also like, yeah, I think church basement is good. What Bible version do you use? New King James and NLT, ESV, uh, Message Bible, Passion, Translation, Amplified. I cross-reference all of them. Look up Rebel News on YouTube. Pastor Arthur arrested for the gospel. Okay, I'll check it out. What do you think about people selling Bibles? What do you mean? What's wrong with that? You have to print them and pay for paper. I think it's okay to sell them. Have you gotten sick of the tenders yet? That's the golden question, Danica. Unfortunately, I haven't. I don't even want to tell you how many days straight i've ate them but yeah i haven't gotten sick of them let's just say that you guys already judge me for drinking watermelon mountain dew so you guys scare me now i don't even i did not want to sleep after tuesday's live right tomorrow night's gonna be amazing make sure you guys are back here do you know where latvia is i don't know exactly where it is on the map but i've heard of it mm -mm -mm. Do the people on Judgment Day who repent go to heaven or no? You can't repent on Judgment Day. Once you're on Judgment Day, it's already too late for you. There is a judgment of faith and there's a judgment of works, which is the judgment seat of Christ, the um, Bema judgment or the Bema judgment, Burma judgment. I don't know. I got to figure out the pronunciation because I'm going to probably preach on it maybe next week. So the way you get into heaven is based on your faith you put in Christ. Obviously works and all that like validate you believe in God because works follow faith and without faith, works faith is dead but you don't get saved based on works and you don't go to heaven based on works you go to heaven based on putting your faith in christ and having a relationship with him bima thank you the bama judgment bima judgment the judgment seat of christ is a judge of on judged on works so people are like why would i stand before god in judgment if i'm a believer i already know i'm going to heaven it's a it's a works judgment so yeah it's a reward everyone gets a different reward for their works so that's why a christian gets judged it's not it's not judgment based on if you're going to go to heaven and hell that's decided already based on if you're a believer or not and then there's the beam of judgment how do i overcome fear of the spiritual prayer i just joined the worship team do you have any tips yeah stay vigilant because now that you're on stage the devil's going to target you so make sure that you're in the word make sure you're praying make sure that you're aware of the enemy strategies some will get many rewards correct where is heaven going to be? What do you mean? Heaven is heaven. Why is Satan such a jerk? He's just angry. Satan is just a really, like, Satan is a dude that's in a, just a really bad mood because he got kicked out of his home and he can never get back there. And he just hates, he hates the fact that he, got, he lost. He's a loser. He got kicked out. So he's just mad all the time. He's mad at everybody. And he just wants to, like, you know, destroy everybody because they are going where he can't go. So yeah, he's in a bad mood all the time. He's never in a good mood. How do I get baptized in the Holy Spirit? Ask. I have a video on receiving the baptism you can check out, but you just need to ask. Satan is big mad. Yeah, he is. He's, he's literally a loser. Like it's not a derogatory. I'm not slandering him because you shouldn't slander angels or spiritual beings, but he's like literally a loser. He's a narcissist. True. Jubilee is the best Maverick City song. I got to listen. What CD is that from? He's a huge baby. Where's the verse? I did a whole video on, uh, go watch my video called Exposing Satan. I talk about him getting kicked out of heaven. But the war where he got kicked down is in Revelation 12. The dragon gets hurled down to the earth. Do you think Satan is sad? He has to be in hell forever? Absolutely. 
He's going to be tortured. After the thousand years, he'll be chained up. Once God releases him again, he gets thrown into the... Uh, after the final judgment seat and everything, he'll get thrown in the fiery lake of burning sulfur for all of eternity, and he'll be burning in torment for all of eternity. So if you guys think Satan's in hell tormenting people, he's not. Hell is not his... Uh, he doesn't run hell. It's not like his home. He doesn't. He has no control over it. He doesn't have the keys. God has the keys to hell. And Satan will be tormented for all of eternity. So he doesn't have time to torment you. He'll be in his own torment. Danger of being kissed in dreams. I don't know what that means. I want to see uh, God, Jesus come down on a horse and, say, and, and whoop Satan. You probably will. I think the whole world and probably everyone in heaven will get to watch that too. I think. What's going to happen after the thousand years? There'll be a new earth and a new heaven. And we will dwell on earth in the new Jerusalem, the city, which is the new heaven for all of eternity. And we will, we will reign with Christ. And who knows after that what's going to happen. All right, guys, I'm going to get on, I'm going to be on here for like less than five more minutes. Um, what's your take on selling food and snacks after church and having yard sales at the church? Nothing wrong with it. I don't see anything wrong with it. Your church building costs money to run. Same thing as selling merch and selling coffee and stuff. Um, if you look at Jesus saying you turned my house into a marketplace, it wasn't them selling merch. They were literally selling sacrifices. I heard a guy say you shouldn't sell merch because you're turning the house into a marketplace. They were literally selling sacrifices so people didn't have to pay the price. They were making the gospel cheap. He wasn't telling them don't sell t-shirts to support your church so you could keep the light bill. You could keep the lights on. He was saying you've turned my house literally into a place of cheap sacrifices and offerings and you're making it easy for people. Yep. But you got to study the Bible. If you don't read the Bible and study, you're going to be one of those people that are like, it's wrong to give money to pastors. Pastors need to be poor. Pastors need to, you know, live and do this or that. They were selling the forgiveness of sin. Correct. Uh, what do I do when I show people deliverance videos and they still don't care? Nothing. Move on. Can you pray for the discernment of spirits? Yes, you can. Isaiah, where should I start deliverance? On your family members. A great way to practice is on your friends and family. Yeah, pastors like, yeah, I don't even want to get into the whole money and like, should pastors be paid? Like, I don't even want to get into that because there's too many places in scripture it says they should be. Traveling teachers should be paid especially well. Paul goes on to say you should be sowing into people that are sowing into you spiritually. They should be reaping physically. So again, for you to say that, you're anti-scriptural because you don't have any scripture to back it up. So that's why I don't even get into debating people because there's, yeah, anyways. Praise the Lord. What does living forever feel like? I don't know, but I can't comprehend it. My family doesn't want to be near me or Jesus. Well, guess what? We're your family now. We want to be near you, so... You explain so well. Have a good night. Thank you, Tammy. I'm going to get off here, guys, in like two minutes. Um, how long do you believe the rapture will happen or until it happens just to guess? If I could guess, like just complete guess. Again, this is not scriptural. Don't clip this and say, Isaiah said God. I, I believe the rapture will happen in like, I don't know. I honestly, I don't know. If I could guess the way things are going right now with the earth, with the pandemic, with violence, with hatred, with lawlessness, with anger, with politics like 20 years what do you guys think everybody guess right now if they're g gonna guess when the rapture would be type in in the amount of years when you think it'll be I, I would say 20 to 30 years maybe sooner i don't know but all the signs are happening already 30 years everyone type i'm curious what you guys think and then we're gonna get off here this will be the last thing we do what do you think of the action bible i haven't read it for t it's probably cool though i think i've seen it it's like a comic book 30 years, 30 years, 1 to 2 years, 10 years, 60 years, 15 years, 60 to 100. Someone said, by the way, I miss your lazy eye. The lazy eye that doesn't exist. Praise the Lord. <laughs> 5 years, 5 to 20, 20, 50, 5, 5, 10 to 30. Everyone looks like they're around like 20 to 30. Tomorrow, I think 50 to 100. I know everyone's been saying the rapture is going to be their generation, but again, no signs that we're seeing have ever happened like this. 80 years. I hope it's not for another 100 years. I mean, I okay, what would be perfect if the rapture was in like, how old am I? I'll be 30 this month. I like. I would like the rapture to be in like 50 years. I would like to be raptured when I'm 80. This is why I could like see my grandkids, my kids grow up and all that stuff. But, but I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm down to go right now. I'm down. If God said, do you want to go now? I'd put my hands both in the air. 
Only kidding, your eyes are perfectly round. Thank you, Jamie. It's going to be soon, I think. So where you want to grow, come on. That's right, Gloria. Anonymous said, thank you for what you do. Thank you, Anonymous. All right, I love you guys. Tomorrow night, less than 24 hours. We will be live with Katie Souza. Be back here. Don't miss it. I will see you guys tomorrow night. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. God bless. See you in the next one tomorrow night. Bye. I know, I know, I know. Let me turn my, my music down a little bit. Cause there we go. I already know you guys are going to ask me to show the bobblehead, the bobblehead, the bobblehead. Here you go. There's the Mr. Bobblehead. There you guys go. There's the mascot of the stream. No, he is not the idol that Nebuchadnezzar made people bow down before. Okay? I know you guys are trying to say that, but you just can't spin it. You guys need to really study your Bible. He's not an idol. No one's worshiping him or praying to him. All right, guys. Love y'all. Love you guys. Bye. Have a good night. Sleep good. See ya. How is there 1,500 of you still here? You guys are too committed. All right. It was a gift, people chill. I know people are like, it's an idol. Someone snuck a, a voodoo doll. I'm like, come on, dude. You guys are too, you guys are doing too much now. You guys are watching too many conspiracy videos now. <laughs> Kelly Hill. Love you, Kelly Hill. Love your family. You guys are awesome. Okay, good night. It's the same reason why I'm still on here, staring at the chat. I don't know. All right, bye. Why are you re-roasting us? We're entertained. I know, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right.